forever on and down. But hello, everybody. Welcome to High Rollers D and D. But we're not playing normal D and D today. Oh no, no. I may be your humble dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes, but today we are playing the Lord of the Rings role-playing game by Free League. Oh, it's part two, baby. Woo! Little Woo! mini adventure. Um, we are joined by not our usual squad. We've got most of the usual squad, but we've got some absentees and a little guest, a little friend of High Rollers. Uh, joining us, we have bah, 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 bah. we have Rhiannon and Kim. Woo! I just shone that right in my eye. Like, I'm an idiot. It's a very smart idea. Hi. <laughs> uh, on the other side, though, we have Katie and our friend Bryony. Friend! Bryony! Friend! 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 <laughs> We, we are sadly missing a Tom and a Trot today. Sadly, They're sadly, off on Holly Bobs. Sadly. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, the, I listen, they brought a lot to the game yeah. last time, so they always do. Um, but no, we do not have a Tom and Trot this week, so Bryony's very kindly come in and is going to be joining us uh, in our little Lord of the Rings adventure. Um, and maybe if she's free next week, she can join us next week as well. <gasps> Put you on the spot, live on stream. <laughs> you uh, can only say yes. You Give us yes. your answer now. Yes. Give us Small your answer yes. right now. Yes. Yes. Not a yes. Yeah. Not yes. <laughs> A um, couple of quick announcements to get into before we go into the game. The first and most important one of always is, and we are going to be sick of hearing about it in the next three weeks, uh, Campaign 3 of High Rollers, our big D&D 5e campaign, our homebrew campaign that we always do, is starting November 5th. Three oh, weeks! Three weeks, baby! Um, or no, four weeks. God. I can't count. Yeah. Four weeks. Uh, uh, but uh, Campaign 3, Althea the Dragon Empire will begin on November 5th. It's brand new characters, brand new world, brand new story, brand new everything, baby, brand new set, brand new assets, brand new logo, brand new everything. Um, and that's all starting on November 5th. So please put it in your books, put it in your diary, make sure you're there for the first episode. We'd love to see you. Um, and it will obviously be available on YouTube and, and uh, podcast as well. So make sure you're subscribed on YouTube, make sure you're signed up uh, to get the podcast. Make sure you're on Patreon if you want to see some cool behind the scenes stuff. Mm. Some very special cool behind the scenes things are coming very soon. Oh, um, yeah. Some are cool behind the scenes things, some are pure chaos. Yes, yes. And we make no apologies yeah. for that. But, and then, but yes, a good mixture of things. So go sign up on Patreon and YouTube members if you'd like to see that stuff as well. You will be seeing a lot more information about Campaign 3, about the world of Althea, about the characters all coming very soon. Uh, so keep your peepers Peeled. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. We're gonna have, have that big energy. We're That's the new emote. Energy. That's the new emote, right? Yeah. Yep. Peepers. Not peepers. me, not me, him, Mark, Mark's him! Peepers. Um, Mark's peepers. Couple of other things before we go. Uh, MCM, before we get started. MCM Comic Con is at the end of this month in London, XL Centre. Um, I am going to be there, just me, just little old me. Uh, on Friday the 27th of October, I have a, a meet and greet at 2pm. Um, I don't have anything to sell, so if you want to bring your D&D books down, or pictures, or fan art, or whatever, I'll sign anything. Bring me anything, I'll sign it. I'll sign, sign your a, face. I'll sign your face, I'll but. sign a, a bug roll. A butt. Uh, I'll sign a book. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, I'll sign anything. Uh, that's at 2 p.m. in the meet and greet area. But also, if you'd like to come along and watch some live D&D at MCM Comic Con on the Friday, at 4.30, I'm doing a special Eberron one-shot on the center stage. Woo! Where I belong. Uh, <laughs> uh, you always, there'll be a special one-shot. Bunch of cool people in that. We've got Johnny Chodney from uh, Oxventure. Oh, nice. uh, Jasper from Throughback Halflings. Yeah. Uh, Luke Kennedy from Dice Loads of cool people. Um, are all going to be there for that as well. And it is, if you're interested, it's a one shot. It's a halfling mafia wedding in the world of Eberron, very much inspired by the Godfather. Incredible. Come and watch that. It's going to be a ton of fun. Sounds great. Um, it's uh, four thirty, I believe, till six. It's only an hour and a half. So why not? It's a th something to do at Comic Con, which you always need, because uh, there's only so many Funko Pops you can browse. Um, <laughs> Speaking of cons, there's another convention. If you can't make it to MCM Comic Con to see me, or if you would like to meet Katie or Tom or Trot or some of the others, uh, you can head along to Wales Comic Con on the 18th and 19th of November in Telford. Wales Comic Con in Telford. Um, <laughs> on the 18th and 19th, we'll be doing signings on both days. We'll, we'll have a booth, uh, and we'll also be doing a panel, the contents of which are yet to be determined. Um, but it'll be a fun fun little panel. Um, come along. You can meet us. We'll sign stuff again. Um, we'll sign anything. I'll sign but 
uh, trot sign, court summons. your tongue, court summons. Yeah, sure, why not? Trot will um, sign even more blank than my checks. Mm, Yeah, it's so. true. Give, give Trot a blank check, he'll sign it. Um, and that is it for the announcements. Uh, that is it. We are going to be jumping straight in to our adventures in Middle Earth. Um, if everyone is ready. ready. I'm ready. We have no super cool intro for this campaign, so let's just get into it. Can't you just manifest one by... Here we go. Oh! <laughs> that's the intro. You have to do that next. Dun dun, dun dun, dun 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 dun. No, that's dead. Oh, okay. We're never using that no again. No more dead. <laughs> so, if everyone's ready, as the end of the third age draws closer, and the shadow across Middle Earth grows, the wise Gandalf the Grey has assembled a company at the Inn of the Prancing Pony in the village of Bree. Unable to attend this meeting himself, as other business draws him away, Gandalf has charged the ranger captain Iraniel, a member of the Dúnedain and heir of Arnor, with leading this company in search for a hidden danger close to the lands of Bree and the Shire. Beginning with a journey to the south to meet with other allies at Sarn Ford. To aid her, Gandalf has recruited the Dwarven Herald, Borin, son of Dori, one of the dwarves of Erebor, as well as Ilvisar, an elven champion of Linden, an old friend of the wizards. And to the surprise of these seasoned travellers, Gandalf has also summoned a pair of hobbits. <laughs> Grundle Boffin, a treasure hunter, and Bungo Grub, a scholar <laughs> of healing. Though mischievous and chaotic, Gandalf told Eraniel that strength can be found in the smallest places. And indeed, the young hobbits have proven themselves already. Whilst discussing their plans for the journey, the company heard the commotion of the inn's horses being set loose. And sensing an ambush, Eraniel opened the door to discover a group of wicked men and women with clubs and blades and flaming lanterns who launched into an attack. In the battle, Ilvasar and Iraniel learned that these wicked men bore the taint of the enemy and an orcish brand of a howling wolf. Fearing that more might linger nearby, they set out for the road and travelled along the ancient greenway south, passing between the South Downs and the haunted Barrow Downs. Thanks to the skill of the ranger captain and the keen senses of the elven champion, they travelled unhindered, and on the night before they reached the ford, they hear a soft elven voice singing a ballad of Beren and Luthien. Approaching a small camp, they meet with Callan here, an elf of Lothlorien, dressed in fine yellow tunic and pointed cap. And as the stars twinkle overhead, the sound of Callan here's fire crackling and spitting, the company must take a moment to introduce themselves. I'm going to slight retcon here because we had a brief conversation with Callan here last time, but we had to kind of rush the ending. And actually, this is a prime opportunity for another cool mechanic in the Lord of the Rings role-playing game, not sponsored, um, called the Council. And this represents those kind of social interactions like the Council of Rivendell and Council of Elrond, where the party, the company, introduce themselves to a stranger they meet. Um, but they are not the only ones. Callan here is not the only one sat at this campfire, for there is also another figure not noticed, sat maybe in the slight shadows of the fire, hooded and cowled. Uh, but, Briny, would you like to uh, tell us uh, the sort of the name of the character you're playing, what uh, class they are, and then also describe them for me, please? Um, so I am playing uh, Bobby Appledore. Oh, my God. oh <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm human. Uh, I'm a warden from sort of the lands around Bree and, like, south of Bree. Um, just sort of uh, like grew up um, hearing stories of all the people traveling through and thought I would go on my own adventures and travel around a bit too. So I'm uh, just wandering around, sort of, I'm gonna say it, handsome. I'm handsome. <laughs> Oh, Bob, Bob being a, a, man, a man. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, and you are playing the Warden, uh, which is uh, a class that we didn't have. It's one of the, the six mm. callings that we didn't have a character for last time. Um, and the Warden, um, think of it as kind of like the strider part of Aragorn, right? If mm. Katie, if, if Araniel is kind of like the captain that uh, Aragorn becomes, you know, in the end with the gleaming sword and leading the charge, um, the Warden is more like the strider, uh, mm. the kind of knowledgeable of the lands, um, very skilled in hunting and tracking and that sort of thing. Um, and in this case, uh, as being from Bree, you are an expert of the lands around Bree. Um, so you see this figure kind of sat next to Callan here, and Callan here has that 
elven grace um, and just almost seems to glow with an inner light. That yellow tunic, you know, very beautifully decorated in silver and gold buttons, embroidery. Um, they have hair, but it's actually tied up, brown hair tied up underneath this kind of almost peaked minstrel's cap, um, yellow in, in color with a large feather uh, sticking out of it. Feather of some great uh, fly, maybe an eagle's feather or some such. Um, they do carry a small lute, um, uh, maybe a lyre, actually. I'm gonna go with an, uh, a lyre, like an elven lyre, and that's what you heard as they sang this ballad, the Ballad of Beren and Luthien, um, an old elven uh, song. Um, and they have uh, basically invited you over, invited you to the campfire. Um, uh, but this is going to be a council, and the council has some like mechanical elements here to kind of complement the role playing. Um, so the first thing is with a council, um, a spokesperson, which is the best speaker in the party, um, that can be the person who can do it in RP, or maybe the person with the best charisma or best like social skills. Um, certainly, this would be a fine moment for a herald, uh, such as Barin, whose very calling is this nature. Um, but it doesn't have to be, it could also be anyone. Really. Really. Um, the spokesperson uh, introduces the company um, and there's you have a couple of choices on how about you want to do that and that kind of sets the tone for how this interaction is going to go. So out of character, who would like to be the spokesperson? It cannot be it cannot be a uh, Bobby because Bobby's already there. Mm. Bobby's going to join in with this uh, interaction, the social uh, thing, but for this introduction, this can't be Bobby. Um, and it's not going to be Grundle or Ilvasar either. <laughs> <'Cause> they're <not laughs> uh, they're going to be strangely quiet. No. Uh, well, I have 16 to Charisma, uh, so plus three. Sure. So 14 is mine. All right. Well, you, it's a, ch a good choice then. You've been the leader so far. I know, but you shout at so me. This a is lot just to make the introduction. Like, you're all going to make, like, you're all going to interact, but this is just to kind take of introduce. the lead on. I feel like you're a more personable. I hate elves, though. They disgust me. <laughs> but there's also human. Okay. You want another human? <laughs> I'll speak to the human only. <laughs> How's that for a great introduction? Sure. I'm just you said be you weren't going to be racist. Horrible racist. racist. <laughs> yeah. You said last week you weren't going to do it. Well, it's, it's, yeah, the dwarves have, you know, culturally they have uh, reasons to hold grudges against the elves. It's not yeah. necessarily. Train us. Like, yeah. And, and it, again, it's like this can just be a prejudice that Boren does have. Like, characters are flawed in fiction. Um, but it doesn't mean it can't be overcome. Yeah. Um, you know, it might Over be the arrogance of elves and things like that. <laughs> if, if this elf is friendly, there's no reason that Boren wouldn't be civil and polite. Yeah, back. yeah, yeah. So, no. All right. Uh, but Unless yeah. it's Ilvasar. Um. <laughs> so, so are you going to be the spokesperson, Bob? I guess I could, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So there's a couple of choices, and we'll get you to do like an actual introduction, but like the, the type of introduction do actually affects the skill you roll, and okay. I think that would affect your RP as well. Okay. So you have a choice. If you use Intimidation, now Intimidation in this game is not just about like threatening and scaring, it's also about speaking confidently and boldly in this mm -hmm. game as well. Um, so an Intimidation introduction is a powerful message with few words to impress or set firm boundaries. However, the spokesperson must reveal the lineage, deeds, and other personal information of the company. So this is basically like, lineage. if you wanted to keep like Iraniel's nature as being a Dunedain a secret, or yourself yeah. as a son of, of uh, you know, a famous dwarf of Erebor, yeah. you couldn't use Intimidate, because you have to, it's like you'd be like, oh, you. Do. this is like when Legolas goes, he, he is no mere ranger, like it's that kind of moment, right? Oh, um, uh, the other options is you can use persuasion, which is when you are charming and seeking favor. It's good if you are on friendly terms with the subject, um, but not so good to unfriendly ears. You can politely refuse to reveal too much information about the company with it, though. I'm going to say that for Borin, if you make persuade, you will do it with disadvantage because of your prejudice against Oh, elves. what? I was going to say that's my best stat. And it still could be. It would just be with disadvantage because you openly dislike elves. Um, the final one is disadvantage which is used to gain information about the target without giving too much away themselves. However, a bad introduction with deception is likely to make the scenario worse. Ooh. Got a plus five to deception as well. Sure. Mm. Um, like I said, you can make it with persuasion. Um, I think I'll do, because that's. I think that's the thing, is like, Boren, he's not particularly deceptive or intimidating. Sure. So I think he's, you know, because he's a jewel smith and a messenger, so I don't feel like he'd come in all like, Big lies and well, I'll tell you what. I'll see how the dis uh, see if you have disadvantage after you actually do an introduction. <laughs> you, you win me over, and I won't make you roll with disadvantage. Um, so yeah, this is like Barin would step forth. Like Callan here would be like, "Hello there, travelers. Please come sit down. Introduce yourselves. What what company is this?" Do we have a name? Do we have a company? No, we never have a company. No, no, no. you don't have to have a company. You would just literally be introducing the individual okay. members. Uh, 
Oh god, what was my voice? I'm just gonna do it yourself again, it's gonna be bad. It was a bit like posh, it was like, it was oh, like, hello, hello, yes. hello. So hello. I'm, I'm Boren, I'm Boren, son, son of Dory. Of Dory. Okay. Yes, that was it. Thank you, kind elf, a beautiful song that you sang us there. Rich in history and delightful to the senses. I am Boren, son of Dory. You may have heard of him. I have indeed heard of the company of, uh, of Thorin Oakenshield, indeed, and the, the matter of the mountain. Um, uh, as you're doing persuasion, you don't have to introduce everyone as well. Obviously, you've introduced I'll, yourself. I'll, but yeah. I'll keep yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You don't have to, though, because you're using persuasion. Um, and I am joined on this fine night by this company. Do I? Uh, are Ilvasar and. Um, they're still there. They're you? still there. Yeah. Uh, first, a fellow elf, Ilvasar, a champion. Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, Elvisar just nods his head uh, towards Callum here. Callum Bridget, ten, ten, ten degrees. Mm, ten ten degree. degree. Yeah, the ten degree. Ten degree yeah. nod, yeah. Pretty handy in a fight, I must say. Although not directly to him. We are also joined by Araniel, who is perhaps the leader of this company and certainly very skilled in the art of fighting and tactics. You see uh, Callan his eyes cast over Araniel, and he smiles very politely, and, but his eyes linger for a moment on the hilt of your sword. As if uh, as if seeing it in recognition, something that he has maybe seen yeah. before or identifies. Um, but yeah, carry on. And beside me, two of the best company I've found so far. This is Grandel Boffin, <laughs> treasure hunter extraordinaire and fancier of fine camemberts. Hello. <laughs> You got any food? Good old cheese face. <laughs> Seriously, keep your camemberts away from this hobbit. <laughs> I'm afraid that my camp has no uh, no such cheeses to offer, but I have some food to share. And to my left is Bungo Grubs, scholar extraordinaire. She does amazing things with leeches, don't you know? Good evening there, sir. And good evening to you as well. You <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> I ain't warmed up. Roll with it. It's fine. Roll with this. You will roll with it. Every sentence, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> it's, a roll, it's a roller coaster, here, guys. Right. So, Callan Callan here kind of nods and he smiles at each one in turn. Uh, if you can you know, make me a roll, no disadvantage. Yeah. Just make a persuasion you check. You the Camembert work. Uh, the DC is 15. Oh, God. Oh, watch me roll bad. Now, don't forget as well, I'm going to remind you guys, uh, we have fellowship points as well. Oh, yeah, um, so yeah, remember yeah. that basically, uh, your fellowship points, now there is only six, one, six. two, three, four no. of you, so if you can reduce it, um, they don't replenish uh, at the end of an adventure. Actually, no, keep them as they are, keep them okay. as they are, because I think that they just don't replenish. We won't, we we won't change. Six. Yeah. So you have six of These them. One. Remember, you can spend them to gain advantage on a roll. If you think it's worthwhile. This is just a sort of introduction. It is just an introduction, so you can't salvage this. Here we go, I'm rolling! That was a big roll. Oh god, it went everywhere. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13! 13. Guidance! It's not, it's not a success. Jennifer English, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> it is not a success, but in this case, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it, it's only really bad if you fail by a considerable amount. In this case, um, you see Callan here nods, and you don't make a super strong impression, is the main thing. Um, he does look around and sort of like regards you all, and uh, he says, well, please come sit. The night is long and dark, and..." We are in a place, and he looks off towards the Barrow Downs, a place where evil can lurk in the shadows. So sit, enjoy the fire. Allow me to introduce another traveller. And he gestures over uh, towards the human that had been company there. This one, I believe, is journeying the roads as well. Introduce yourself, friend. It's a strange party you keep. I'm Bobby Appledore, and I suppose these are the travellers you hinted I'd be travelling with. We will have to see, but I suspect that you're Destinations are entwined. Um, oh, because we failed, does that mean we don't get a Bryony? <laughs> no, you Aww. do get a Bryony. Uh, Callan here will say, well, it is a pleasure to make your company. I am Callan here. I have travelled from the realm of my Lady Galadriel. And... Wow. <laughs> thank you. She is, <laughs> she is quite resplendent. And it is, in fact, your coming that she foresaw. I have come to... Meet the measure of the company that Gandalf Mithrandir has summoned. Come, sit, tell me of yourselves, what your travels have brought you thus far. And he will look around uh, and he will kind of look at you each individually. Um, and he will begin, he initially looks towards Iraniel, but then he diverts his attention and he looks towards Borin. 
Finely spoken, Master Dwarf. I can see that you are a master smith uh, of jewelry and, and the like, uh, resplendent by the jewelry that you wear. Um, oh, thank you. Of course. Yeah, for Barney's sake, I'm like covered in jewelry. <laughs> like my beard, which is about as long as me, is just covered in rings and jewels. And you're I've very got, well dressed yeah. as well, like yeah. very richly dressed. Like looks rings on every wealth. finger. Like I'm, I'm rich, yo. Mm. <laughs> Tell me, Master Dwarf. Why have you come on this journey? I know that Mithrandir has summoned you, but uh, as your travels have come, have you come to believe that there is a reason you are here? Well, as my father says, when Gandalf calls, you can't say no. You go where Gandalf tells you, and there'll be a fine adventure at the end of it. Uh, beyond that, he mentions something of shadows and a coming darkness. Uh, I was hoping that our uh, Lady Ar 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 <laughs> Dyslexia, Araniel, <laughs> would perhaps know more. Well, I think that the, the nature of shadows is that often they obscure uh, uh, information and things. But still, you have come simply because Gandalf asked, so it is duty that drives you? Duty, family honor. Common traits of the dwarven kind, as I understand. If you were to journey, is it a reward that you would seek? Hmm. 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 <laughs> How would Boren answer this? I know for how your, Kim would answer this. For your this. father, when he traveled upon his adventure, a great prize lay at its end. Is that what you hope for, Boren, son of Dori? If I could be honest with you, Master Please Elf. Speak candidly. <clears throat> My prize. Oh God, it went. <laughs> <laughs> it went. Don't worry about it. <laughs> My 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 prize my prize my prize <laughs> would be a story to match my father's. Mm. I feel inadequate in his company sometimes. Is that the truth? Yes. Could you roll a persuasion check for me, please? Mm. Eight, please. <sighs> Is that a one? I rolled a two. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget you have uh, fellowship points if you'd like to re-roll. I will allow the spending of a fellowship point to re-roll. Am I allowed a little fellowship Well, you don't have point? to have the group's permission. It's just your decision. Obviously, socially, you might want to ask for permission. Socially? <laughs> Democracy. Am I allowed a little fellowship point? Sure. Yeah. Okay. He's really staring at me, this sure. elf. Like, no, really, no, you, like, yeah. he's in my It's soul. very intense. Like, the gaze yeah. of this elf is very intense. in my intense. soul right now, and I don't like, like it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. Make him go. <laughs> Plus five, twenty. Twice. A success. Success. Oh yeah, one less fellowship point. So Sorry. yes, please mark that down. Um, uh, so we're down to five. So you have five fellowship points, right? If you want to write that, you can write it on a piece of paper, paper, scrap piece of paper, and stuff there's as well a, if you like. There's a spot. So you can use those. You can use those to re-roll a dice or gain advantage on a roll. Um, and they can go and come. Um, so with that success, uh, and I count that you've got one success, but I'm also going to reveal a bit more about what Callan, Callan here's intentions kind of are here. He looks to you and says. Mm. A fine and honest answer. It seems that I, it seems that it, this is a fine and honest company. I come with gifts. Oh. Lady Gladriel has sent me here to meet with you at this crossroads, all of you, and he even looks towards you, boy. But I am also here to test you in a sense. My gifts come in many forms. I have trinkets. I also have knowledge. I have songs. The request shall fall to you, which one you would ask for. When this night is done, before you conclude your journey, before you sleep, I could use, I am something of a smith myself, and as you sleep, I could work a rune into a shield or a sword. I carry and he, they, he pats like a, a very beautiful leather pack next to him. I have more unique gifts to bring. But like I said, I also have knowledge, insight, and many songs and tales that I can spread, which will lighten one's heart, uh, soothe one's wounds. But I leave that to you. But I want you to know the metal, know the, the nature of those who travel in this company, because it is 
into the dark that you travel. And weak hearts will not help you. He kind of intensely stares, not threatening, but an ominous sense to his words. Uh, and he'll look over at Bungo Grub. No. <laughs> a small one to journey from the Shire, a land of peace and gardens. You've already begun to see a wider world out here. Mm. The evil in men and women. What make you all of this, this hobbit? It's, it's like a rich tapestry almost. It's like full of different colors and shades and it's woven together by friends. It's, it's, it's horrifying, it's, but it's also exciting at the same time. It's the biggest adventure I've ever had so far and we've only just started. <laughs> it is indeed that, but what if things are less bright? What if things take a darker turn? Mm. What then? I'll try to make people laugh, I guess. I'll write them a poem, I'll sing You're a little a poet. song. I, well, I, I try to. I'm, I'm not as gifted with words as you are, Mr. Elf. I sing ancient words, they are not my own. Well, they're beautiful and... Well, perhaps then you could, uh, as the night goes on and there is food to eat and drink to be drunk, do you have a song or a poem that you could recite for us now? So, if you want to, Ree. Mm -hmm. uh, so as part of like the kind of social interaction, like kind of similar like if this was a skill challenge or something like that, rather than trying to persuade Kalantir or like, you know, answer his questions or things like that, if you want to, you can use the perform song, performance um, uh, skill, and you'll actually give a bonus to another role. You'll basically make it easier for somebody to succeed down the line by like playing a lovely tune or like, you know, singing a lovely song. Aww. It's up to you. You can either basically answer, like kind of talk to him and try and convince him that you're ready for what lies ahead, or if if you want to, you can sort of lighten the mood, literally with a song or a poem. You did that awesome poem last week. Well, yeah, and yeah, you don't feel like you actually have to read or sing anything, by the way. Like, I know I was doing it last week, but please don't feel like you have to come up with something on the spot. We can yeah, just make this a roll. Sure, you could recite that one again, but yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, I'll do the, the, the perform song then. Sure. That one. Um, our new friends they gather, adventure we found To cast back the shadow and cover new ground The grey one he called us, for him will be strong Our songs will be merry, the road will be long You see that as you begin to kind of like recite it And there is a melody there, so like as you do Callan here begins to pluck away at his lyre And almost adds this musical accompaniment to it um, And he improvises a verse of his own that he adds to it And he begins to kind of help you develop it more Into an actual like little walking song mm. um, Make a performance check for me then, so d20 Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can spend fellowship die if you wish. I've got a seven total. Seven total. It's up to you if you would like to reroll. Fellowship dice? I'd be up for it. Yeah. Because it's such a lovely moment. Ooh, 20. 20 total. Nice. Okay, great. So what that's going to do is, uh, oh sorry, it doesn't add a success, but um, you can give a plus five bonus to another oh, roll. Wow. So oh, cool. when when either Bobby or Eraniel make their roll, um, you can choose to give them a plus five to it to represent you literally answering Kalanir's question about what would you do and like, are you prepared for things to be dark and, and gloomy by literally brightening the mood at this campfire. Like your song fills your company, your company's hearts, and like you know you even see. You know, Ilvasar tapping his foot and Grundle's doing a little dance as you kind of sing, and it all becomes like this little jolly moment of everyone just kind of joining in on a chorus and things like that. And it becomes this lovely little moment. Um, as you kind of sing that, like Callan here breaks out some food, you break out your own rations, you begin to eat, and then he turns his eyes towards you, Bobby. Um, he says, Now, you, good traveling friend, you do not know these people, yes? No, I've never set eyes on them before. Oh, oh. Yet, I believe that you are headed in the same direction, and would you walk with them? Would you travel with them into the shadow if necessary? These are strangers to you after all. I would, but I think I've seen into the heart of all of them, and I like what I see. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> A bold claim to see into the hearts of men, hobbits, and dwarves. But I do believe in your sincerity, that you believe it to be true. Why do you travel to this place? Why do you travel to the Ford? Well, it's important that we start 
sharing our knowledge in these times, I feel, and I've seen a shadow that I don't know what to do with. Mm, a shadow is growing across Middle Earth. A darkness that will encompass us all. I do not have long left in this realm. That is why I have been sent. Soon I will travel to the Grey Havens and make my way from Middle Earth. For the shadow, I have dwelt in it too long. But for you, perhaps there is hope. Can you make a uh, persuasion check for me, please, Brian? Mm. This is using your persuasion skill. Oh. 16. 16. Would you like to like roll or would you like to add a plus five to that? No, plus five. Oh, super. Sub to you, you don't have to. 16 is pretty good. Yeah. I'll add it. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you watch as Callan here kind of nods and smiles and says, mm, Very good. I think that you should stick close. And he looks towards Iraniel, to this one especially. I think you have a common purpose and a common goal. These lands are your home, and once these lands belong to your ancestors. I know you, Dunedain. I see that blade that you carry. Tell me, what is its name? My Carol. My Carol. The glittering blade. Do you know? of its secrets. All I know is that it was a gift, a gift given to Arnor mm. to symbolize friendship. Would you like to know? Please. I know this blade well. It's a story passed amongst a few of us. It was given to one of the four sons of Isildur. A ceremonial blade, a gift of friendship. It is called the Glittering Blade, for in the presence of the Shadow, especially the forces of the Witch King, it will glow, and it shall strike that which cannot be struck. For it is made of star, and star can touch even the deepest of night. Well, it certainly makes sense why Gandalf might have chosen me for this, this path. Indeed. What do you make of that, of Mithrandir's choice? Are you proud to lead this company? Or does doubt linger in your mind? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if doubt is the right word. Merely, there will always be caution when a shadow is involved. I don't doubt in Gandalf's choices. <laughs> I just doubt in how powerful the shadow becomes and our ability to defeat it. Mm. Is that your ability to defeat it? Do you speak of men? Do you speak of yourself? I speak of all of Middle-earth. Ah, a wise answer. Can you make a persuasion check? <laughs> Remember, if you'd like to spend a fellowship point, you can give yourself advantage. Boys are going to come back and be like, Ooh, no, where's all our fellowship points? Uh, 18, 18 plus 5, isn't it? 23. Damn! Woo! What's it like, <gasps> that side of the table? I was going to be like, <laughs> your high rolls. <laughs> if I get a one, <laughs> we're going to have to spend another oh, grand guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cameron here listens and says, uh, my lady will be pleased. You have proven to me that your hearts are strong and that you're, you are led by wisdom. You have courage, you have hope, and you have skill. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> I shall grant, I shall give you a choice, each of you. And he even looks at Grundle and Ildasol and they say, so you can make a choice for both of them. <laughs> I would ask only one thing in return. My journey back to Lothlorien will be dangerous. I would ask that Ilvisar, you and perhaps one other, 
accompany me for a short time, short distance. As I said, the shadow grows in these lands, and I am not a warrior. If I may ask that, in return I shall give four gifts, six gifts, six gifts, one for each of you. You may choose a gift of her lady, and he pats the, the satchel beside him, of which I carry two. I will also fix upon your equipment a rune that will aid you. Or I can give you the gift of my knowledge and insight that may help you in coming days. Or, last of all, a song to lighten one's heart. As a minstrel, that is the gift I am most confident to give. But it is your choice. I can what? make suggestions if thou wish. <laughs> Wait, Katie wants a shiny present. Sure. But the character wants knowledge. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, Kim wants um, a song. Sure. Because that sounds rad. But the dwarf wants gold. I'm gonna point out, I don't have enough songs to sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I sang my two Lord of the Rings songs last time. Yeah. Um, um, I think, I mean, I'll, I can go first as Boren because I think he's got a very clear idea. Like, Boren. I mean, I think also like Callan here has a recommendation for yeah, Boren yeah. as well. Okay. Like, um, but, but you, you, what would you? What no, would, what? I, I think the gut instinct for Boren would be like, well, he's jewelry and and mm -hmm. gold and stuff like. So he would instantly be like, my gift. <laughs> sure. Um, and so Callan here will say, hmm, as I expected, to you, Boren, son of Dori. He reaches into the pack and he picks up something that holds in his hand. A very precious gift of the elven kind. May this serve you well in your coming days and also perhaps go some way to ease the distrust between elves and dwarves. And he hands you, as he opens his hand, a beautiful silver elven ring. Uh, it's woven to resemble braided hair with small gemstones woven amongst it that glitter like stars in the night. Mm. This is the band of Tenuviel. Mm -hmm. Would um, Boren know anything of like the name or...? Make a old lore check oh. for me. Because so, this is elven and you are dwarven, so... Yeah. I got a plus two to You that. will know, but you won't have to roll. You'll only know the basics, then. You can make a roll if you want to know more, but, like, you'll know the basics. Okay. You'll know? Fifteen. Fifteen? Um, so, fifteen. Um, it's You actually connect it because you remember the song that Callan here was singing when you arrived. Mm -hmm. And it is an old song called the Ballad of uh, Beren and Luthien, or Luthien and Beren. But uh, Luthien is an elven maiden, and she has another name called Tinuviel, and mm. that's how she's referred to in the song. Um, and the two of them, uh, Beren was a man, and they fell in love, and they had many uh, kind of adventures almost together, um, including robbing one of robbing one of the Silmarils from uh, mm. the enemy, um, stealing it back. And uh, yeah, Tinuviel was an elven maiden of great beauty, um, known for her long dark hair. Uh, that glittered as if it was the night sky. Um, and this appears to be a ring fashioned for her. Whether it was some worn by her, it was certainly made by elves for her. Yeah. Um, and that counts as a wondrous item, so it is a magical item. Mm -hmm. And you can see the effects there. Um, you don't need to reveal them just yet. Yeah. Um, we'll so, kind of give out the gifts. <clears throat> I think when um, Callan here hands it over and, and Boren can actually see it. Mm -hmm. And I it is beautiful. Immediately, I think you would see Boren starts crying, like he tears up because I don't think he's ever, also he wouldn't have ever, yeah, like he would say like, I, I, I don't think I've ever, ever been gifted elven. This, this is the most, single most beautiful thing I've ever encountered in my life. And to represent the story, Behind it, there are they. Is it like a legend or is it? Oh, it's, a, it's an old legend. Like Beren and Luthien are from thousands of years yeah. ago. They, they, they are very famous, like famously like known in Elven culture. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Like you, you've heard the story mm. probably in passing, but it's not something the dwarves would really know or care about. Mm. But you obviously have studied it. Um, but yeah, they are of yeah. legend basically. Yeah. Um, to, to carry a ring of of such legendary figures. I can think. <laughs> I can think of no finer member of this company to carry it. Or who could appreciate such craftsmanship of... of it's exquisite. I will never make anything this fine in my life. It's all right, mate, it's all right. <laughs> and it's gorgeous. It looks really good on you. Thank you. You see Callan here just 
smile softly, <laughs> kind of observing the scene. You just reminded me, sublime! <laughs> sublime! <laughs> he looks around, uh, and he will look over to Bobby um, and say, what of you, good traveler? Is there something, can you think of something that you may request or something that may aid you? Um, uh, as, as, just make a point as well. Um, so he can take a piece of your equipment, either an armor, a weapon, or a shield, and he can craft a rune into it that will actually improve it as well. Um, there's a number of options. They're all very combat orientated. So it's things like making your weapon do more damage on a critical hit, um, improving a shield's armor class, um, making a weapon uh, do more damage, um, things like that, making like your armor more protective and stuff like that. So you can do those kind of things as well. And that applies for everyone. Uh, that's probably what I'm going to give to the two missing boys. Um, I'm going to just give them the, the runes. Oh, sweet boys. Just give Tom <laughs> some, some cheese, man. Yeah, yeah give him an happy. enchanted Tom camembert. Sure. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, like, um, I, I'm, you know, I'm from simple folk. I, I don't really have need for such beautiful things other than what nature provides. And I'm gonna, my eyes dart towards <laughs> Raniel when I say that. I say, but what gold can't buy is a, a, a lifted heart. So I'll take a song, please. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Cute and yet slightly pervy. <laughs> <laughs> Not that part, but the other part. <laughs> yeah, part, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, you all hear, as Callum here, pulls out his lyre and sings a beautiful song in Elvish, which is why I'm not going to sing it, because I don't speak <laughs> it. But he sings this beautiful song that echoes around you. Um, and as he does, it soothes your aches, fills your heart. Um, so uh, you gain a fellowship point Woo. Uh, for starters. Um, uh, and Bobby, uh, because you don't have any shadow points um, or spent hit dice, um, I'm going to basically give you a boon. So the first shadow point you acquire, you ignore. Oh, okay. So your heart is steeled against Aww. despair That's and weird. fear and greed. Um, and yeah, the whole team regains one fellowship die as well. Um, nice. For a song. Um, and yeah, he finishes the song and nods his heads towards you, Bobby. And it is probably one of the most beautiful songs you have heard in your life. Um, it is uh, exceptional, uh, ethereal, um, and uh, will linger with you for a long time still to come. Um, Callan here will look towards you, Iraniel, and say, I know, as duty as leader, you likely seek knowledge. That I will give you. But I fear that this gift from my lady should be taken by one of this company. And he will reach into the bag and he pulls out a fine, thick leather belt, which is engraved with hemlock leaves and antlers and features a fine buckle of elven gold. Mm -hmm. The belt of Beren to accompany the ring of Tenuviel. Uh, and it is, uh, it does appear to be that this might even be the belt that Berin, human figure of legend, actually wore. Mm. Does it smell, does it, <laughs> as a musk? It's got to be, no, it, it smells of that fine leather. Yeah. Like, it, it yeah. doesn't smell, Aged, it's not dirty like, or yeah. soil. Um, it almost looks brand, and no, it would look worn, like as if it's been worn, but it doesn't smell, or like it doesn't have dirt on it, but it looks cracked and broken as if it's been worn for a yeah, long yeah. time. Please pass my thanks to your lady. It's extremely generous and will definitely be used well. I am sure it will. And likely passed to your heirs and to their heirs beyond. May the strength of Beren go with you. I will grant you some knowledge, but first, a small hobbit. What <laughs> gift could I provide to one of the Shire folk? Well, I don't, I don't know a lot about the wider world, um, so if I could know more about it and what we're about to face, I, that would be that would be good, I think, if I can handle it. I'm sure you can. And he will lean in conspiratorially close uh, to you, Bungo. Um, I'm trying to decide if I have you guys leave. No, I don't think I will. Um, he whispers to you, so only Bungo hears this initially. 
he will do you want whisper. Us to cover no, 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 it's fine. You don't need to. Um, I was thinking about it, but you don't have to. Um, <laughs> Because I'm also trying to, I've got to come up with a cryptic thing to say. He does speak in almost a riddle, uh, mm. and he will say to you, uh, he will say to you, when the wolf howls, the sun shall sing to the north. In darkness, you will find death. Uh oh. But the golden light of dawn shall be your greatest ally. Mm. Alongside that knowledge, you also gain a boon. Ooh which is, at any point in the next uh, 48 hours, no, in the next, like, I'd say up and basically when you feel it kind of aligns to that cryptic riddle, when you feel that there's something you want to do that kind of fits that description of that riddle, you can add a plus five bonus to a skill roll. Oh, wow. But it's a one-use thing. Okay. So it's like almost like you, you're having that Sherlock moment of like, this is what the riddle meant, and then mm. you can have that plus five bonus. To be blessed by... The words of an elf of Lorien is quite an honor. I am just a humble minstrel, my my good bunger. My, my good words. Bunger. <laughs> Surname? Surname? No, no, no. It's okay. So good. And he says, "May this knowledge aid you." Oh, it will. But I feel you. that. Do not feel unworthy. I feel that you of all, when the time is right, in the dark places of the world. Your song and your light will be of great service. Single tear. <laughs> uh, with that, he will say, and for knowledge, information, the ford is but a day's travel from here. By, by sundown tomorrow, before sundown tomorrow, you shall likely reach it. There is the forces of the enemy are at work in these lands. Where I cannot see, they are hidden from me. But I have heard the horns of orcs and goblins in the night. I have seen the tracks of wargs, but there is also a more, and he looks towards the Barrow Downs. This is a land full of evil, and you may have to fight you may have to deal with not just the servants of the enemy, but older evils as well. Your journey to the Ford will be uninterrupted. You will find no more harm between here and the Ford. But beyond that, my sight cannot see. Be cautious, be wary, but keep hope and rest well. Uh, and he will gesture and say, you need not fear this night. I will keep watch and make sure that the enemy does not find us here. With that, he is going to take um, uh, Ilvasar's bow and he will take uh, the, da the blade that Grundle took um, he's going to take those and he's going to begin working on them. And you see that he lays them out and he gets out fine, kind of almost like smith tools and begins like chiseling like um, runes into the blade and carving runes into the, the bow. And he's going to work on that through the night to give them some additional equipment, some bonuses to their equipment. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Grundle and Ilvasar are going to accompany uh, Callan here a ways. Because Why they're not here. to? Why up here? Yeah, weird. Um, I want to go to strange. Lothlorien. <laughs> no, they're not taking him all the way to Lothlorien. They're just going to escort him to the uh, where he feels safe, basically. Um, but with that, uh, that is going to bring this council to an end and give you some lovely gifts, uh, some lovely little special things, and some knowledge um, as we wrap up the evening. And so you basically go to sleep. It is the most peaceful sleep that you can imagine. Um, but when morning comes, uh, Callan here, Ilvisar, and Grundle have already left. Left the 
four of you with this new companion uh, who seems to be traveling in the same direction that you've not really had a chance to speak to yet. Although I imagine over the night you probably had a chance to kind of chat and, and get to know one another. Tell me your bit. entire life's history. <laughs> <laughs> probably not that, but enough to be on friendly terms. How do you feel about gold? <laughs> <laughs> um... And yeah, you awake and begin uh, to finish, because that was literally the last event that happens just before you finish your journey, was the chance meeting with Camille. Mm. And for you, uh, Bobby, it's been the same. You, there's a me journey mechanic in this game. You have also been on a long journey, so um, the mechanics of the journey are still going to apply to you, even though you've kind of just come in. You've also been on your own lengthy journey. Um, and with that, uh, we're going to actually wrap up the journey mechanics with the last step, which is you have to, at the end of a journey, you make a fatigue saving throw. Ooh. This is a constitution saving throw, just to see how tired you become from it. Uh, Briny, as you are a warden and you are traveling in your own lands, you have advantage on these, because okay. um, this is you are traveling in, in Cardland. Uh, I also have an ability called Tireless and Swift, which is plus two to fatigue saving throws. Hey, even better. So, you so get to add that as well. Constitution saving throw plus with a plus two for you, and then advantage a Constitution saving throw for Bryony, and then uh, Bungo and Iraniel just make normal Constitution saving throws. The DC is only eleven. It was ten. You had uh, the shortcut, which added one, Ooh. but it's DC eleven. Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. I was going to come to you last. You made a face. <laughs> Sixteen. 20. 20, success, and then Bryony. 20. 20, perfect. You've got natural 20. I'm Honkshu and Mimi. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, well, with that, you guys, yeah, complete that journey without uh, you feel rested, uh, awake, um, and yeah, you arrive at Sanford. Um, Sanford. Sanford. It's Sanford. Sarnford. 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 Best village in the world. Um, you arrive. Uh, at the Ford a few hours before sunset. And what you see is Sean Ford is basically, there probably was once like a, a kind of, um, it looks like the river cut through here. And there is a, there's a you know steep river that flows that you've kind of been following a little bit. Um, but the there have been like man-made like mounds and banks to create a ford. So there is a river running through here. Um, and in fact, uh, if you want to show the map, Sam, we actually have a representation of the ford as best as I could make it with my 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 stuff um, as we have at Sarn Ford here. So these are the actual like rivers, basically the water flying through it. Imagine that it kind of careens off to the side. Um, you guys are going to be arriving from the north, which is up here. Um, and you guys have miniatures. Um, uh, while you do that, I forgot to get one thing. I am not on a square. Put me on square. You go for first. I'm behind you. <laughs> I'm behind the lady. <laughs> oh, you're making it so small. I'm so tiny. Oh, <laughs> baby. Um, <laughs> the nice thing of having all of these things is that I can go and get Oh, them. cool. That looks cozy. Oh. Oh. So, the river, um, you can hear the rushing waters of the river, but you see the kind of like sections, the lumps of dirt and grass, the trees all around as the ford kind of comes into view. Um, it kind of runs north to south, uh, so where you guys, you are actually kind of following the road as it comes up. You can see in the distance, uh, near the tree line on the far side of the ford, that there is a kind of camp that's been made, a few tents, a few kind of temporary shelters, um, a cooking pot and things like that, but, it looks disturbed. I need you all to make perception checks, please. Mm. 10. 10. 14. 14. 17. 17. 17. 10. 10. Those of you with a 10, um, you definitely see immediately that there's been a battle here. You don't get the details of it, but you can see the ground is all torn up, loads of different types of tracks. You, you're not able to identify the individual tracks, but you can see that there is, clearly there was a, a commotion here. Um, uh, those of you, so Bungo, you got the 14. Um, you see uh, that there is blood, red streaks in the water coming from upstream. No. With 17, Bobby, you know these lands and your, the hairs on the back of your neck are beginning to raise. Um, you see broken arrows scattered here and there. You see clefts in the dirt where a blade has been swung. 
Um, you see limbs of trees that have been felled by something large moving amongst them. You are able to see that the, the tracks you would need to actually properly investigate, like somebody who's going to need to like properly spend some time to figure out the tracks, but you can see that a battle took place here. Um, when you guys kind of become aware of this, you're all able to see that this was the sign, this was a place of violence. I actually need all of you to make a charisma saving throw against Shadow Ooh. for a source of dread as you see their witnesses. Now, Bungo, uh, Bungo yeah. as you are a hobbit, you have advantage on any saves against Shadow because okay. hobbits are resistant to the, their power Aww, of the enemy. Because they're Aww, sweet. Cute. Um, nice. For a charisma saving throw, yes. 14. Please. 14. 17. 17. 19. Natural one. Five. Before I get into the world's results, I missed a cool mechanic last time we played this. There is a thing in this game about the the eye of the enemy. Oh! <laughs> and uh, when you begin an adventuring session, which we did last time, uh -huh. you calculate uh, the the eye's score based on who is in the party. And for example, if you have a Dunedain, it goes up. If you have a famed weapon, it goes up. Uh -oh. And this is because the eye of Sauron is drawn. <gasps> That's cool. Oh, he peeking. Every time you roll a natural one, uh -oh. your eye score goes up by one. Uh -oh. We rolled Every a lot last week. You oh, did. God, we oh, did. I went back like and checked. Five. I didn't least. do, I gave you three, because I remembered the, the three. Because yeah. there was one yeah, where we were all three. three. Yeah, so we I added three. Them. But also, every time you gain a shadow point, you also gain one as mm. well. Um, now it does have to get quite high, but it's a cool mechanic to basically indicate that. And when the when your score, your eye score, overgoes a certain threshold, depending on the area you're in, you're basically like an event will happen where like he looking right at us. Yeah, so you're all like orcs ascent, yeah. or maybe like one of the worst things is a Nazgul shows up. Oh, I don't want to fight Nazgul right now. So we're not technically, so. it's not our fault that we're rolling that ones, it's Sauron. Yeah, yeah. Sauron, yeah. Sauron's, yeah. Like... It's Sauron's influence. <laughs> yeah, that's um, sick. But because of that, because of that natural one, Katie, I'm going to increase your score. Oh, look, we're oh, so happy. Sauron, He's like, Sauron, yeah. Sauron, Sauron. Um, so, uh, who got below a 15? It would have been uh, Iraniel and also somebody got 14. Was it Borin? I said 14, didn't yes. I? Yeah. 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 No, because it was a 9 plus 5. Yeah. yeah. So 14. Um, and then Bungo, you got like. A 19. 19 and a 17 over there for Bobby. So Bobby and Bungo, um, you only gain. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. I love, I, every time I say that, I love it. Bobby, uh, Bungo, and Boris. You are both going to gain one shadow point, even though you succeeded, but you Ooh. reduced it. Uh, Araniel and Boren, you gain two shadow points. No. Oh, with the um, rest cute. that we had, mm -hmm. so I had one, I have two hit dice and I mm -hmm. had one that I used last adventure. Does hit dice, oh. When you are on a journey, when you sleep, it doesn't count as a long rest. Okay. It only counts as a short rest. Okay. Um, all right, um, so seeing this site of the battle that you were sent, that Gandalf sent you to, and seeing that there was a pretty gruesome looking battle as well, there is blood. Like, as, as Bungo points it out, as you begin to see the, the broken arrows, they are tinged with blood, um, the, the broken trees, like, this was a violent encounter. And certainly you don't see any bodies here, um, mm. but there was definitely an attack. And that sense of dread, and that the reason it was a charisma save, by the way, is because it comes from a sense of fear and mm, dread. Yeah. You're beginning to have those doubts, or like, oh my god, the enemy's here, or like, we failed. You know, those kind of thoughts um, influence you. Um, but. For now, the, you've probably got a couple of hours before sunset. Um, you can see the camp. There are tracks, but there are also, I mean, there might be things around. You don't know. Like, you, you have this environment to, to do what you wish to. Um, I'm not going to track turns or anything like that. If you want to be like, I want to move to there, or I want to do this, like, absolutely. Go ahead, promptly. Can I take a, a closer look at the track? Yeah, absolutely you can. So the tracks are all kind of, like, all over the place. But you no, tree to, fell over. No, uh, tree fell over. Um, so Bobby begins moving in. So you'd probably be around here where the tracks begin, sort of around here. What about the rest of you three? Where would you guys want to go? I'm a messenger, so I'd be trying to deliver a package to someone, but they're not here, so I'm just going to chuck it in the river. Okay. Um. <laughs> Classic. Good joke. <laughs> I'm not bitter about my missed deliveries this week. Not in the slightest. Uh, I would like to... I don't know, actually. Boren doesn't have anything particularly, like, outdoorsy. Can I... But like things like you could investigate the camp or something like yeah. that. Search for like clues. Can I search for clues in the campsite? Sure. 
It looks cosy. So you make your way over here and begin sort of rummaging around. Yeah. Looking for any signs of what might have happened or any notes that might have been left or reports. Oh, I, I love reading people's notes. Yeah, love sure. it. Nice. Um, what about Iraniel and Bungo Grub? Uh, I think Bungo would try and bolster courage. Um, I want to use my um, rhymes of law. Okay. But I want to use it on um, Iraniel and just be like, just as if she's, like, she's trying to prove herself, like mm -hmm. that she can be brave mm -hmm. by like bolstering herself, but then also bolstering Iraniel and giving like, her... Give her like a little pep talk. Yeah, a little pep sure. talk. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks scary, but I think we can do this. We can be brave for Gandalf, right? We can do this. But yeah. For you know what, Bungo? Yeah. <laughs> That's, um, Life changing. That's an extra d6, right? It's like a bardic yeah. inspiration. So you have a oh. d6 you can add to an For attack roll, ability no. roll, or a saving throw. Um, all right. Nice. So yeah. So like Bungo. So you're gonna just walk wherever wherever Aranil goes. Yeah, I'm gonna follow. Him. Okay. Just, just yeah. bumbling. Oh, where am I? <laughs> Be brave. Just go. You got this. You got this. What about Iranil? What's Iranil doing? Um. You could help Bobby with the tracks. You could like search around like. Um, yeah, I feel trees. like. Probably. You could follow this source of the blood. Can I look at some of, you said there's like arrows and stuff on it. Can I look at mm -hmm. some of the weapons and see if I can figure out what sure. kind of, who had them? Like mm -hmm. if they were orc, goblin, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Yeah, you can there's um, some embedded in this tree here. So I've moved you over here. You can see some props sticking out of the tree. Begin pulling them out. All right, so let's go around then. We'll start with Bobby, who's uh, first up, investigating the tracks. Um, so I believe there is a skill called tracking in this um, on your skill list of skills. Um, it might be hunting then, I'm thinking. Hunting, hunting yeah. yeah. Is there not a tracking? No, there's. Oh. Let's do hunting then. Hunting. Okay. Oh. And you would get advantage on this because you are in your. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is in your element. You're in your, your lands. Oh, uh, Matt's 21. 21. What has Tom done to those dice? He's microwaved every single one of them. Yeah, <laughs> you should be cursed. You should be low rolling. Can you pass that oh. to Bryony? Yeah, I'm no, being nice to you. Use your <laughs> um, Have a read of that. I'm going to go to somebody else, and then we'll basically, like, that's this is to represent. So you see Bobby kind of get down on the ground doing the Aragorn thing, like like looking at the ground. Oh, it's not here. Um, but examining <laughs> it. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like examining it and kind of really paying close attention. And it's, it's going to take you a while as you're investigating all the tracks, but that's the information you're going to get out of it. But we're going to jump around and do all the rolls. Um, let's do uh, Borin searching the camp. Um, yeah, give me an investigation roll. Okay. Uh, and you do get an extra d4. I would like to use my ring at magic. You Ooh. would like to so say one of your two uses of a magical success. Is that it? No. So, oh, you get oh, the D4 all times. the time. Yeah. So add one D4 to riddle and investigation. That's all the time. But also I can twice per long rest mm -hmm. just automatically succeed. Well, not just automatically succeed, achieve a magical success. Magical. A magical oh. success in this game is like, basically you can do the impossible. I want to try that. Sure. All right, mark off what well, you use <laughs> one of your uses. And I, I like to think he almost unintentionally does it because he's just like holding this beautiful ring and just always touching it and like. Well, there's... I will come back to that in a minute because there's a very specific thing that's going to happen. Oh. Um, but I'm going to kind of do that and we're going to do all the rolls and then we're going to do the information in reverse order. Um, so we come to Iraniel who's going to search. So this would be either um, perception or investigation or I would say you want to know like who made the arrows and things, right? I want to know what I'm, I'm trying to garner what forces we're fighting. Here, what so. forces we're fighting here. So I'd say either perception, um, investigation, or I would say... <laughs> one of the intelligence skills. Uh, I'm trying to think of which one would be the most appropriate. Well, none of those have a good plus for me, so it's probably going to be a perception. Let's do perception. <laughs> roll, roll good skills. <laughs> 15 plus 3, 18. 18, all right. We're rolling really well today. Um, and then, and you have Bungo so. accompanying you, but you're kind of like offering the help and things like that. Yeah. Um, so we'll do it in reverse order. So, Iraniel, you pull out the arrows and you begin sifting through them. There are two types. One you recognize as being used by people of Bree, villagers, you know, common wooden shaft, uh, fletched, you know, probably from a local bird. Um, probably not metal, probably stone or flint um, arrowheads. Um, 
There's a few of those scattered around, fired out from the camp, and you can see that they were firing out at forces approaching the camp. Um, you maybe find a couple on your walk up to the tree. When you get to the tree, you see the type of arrow that was fired back towards the camp. And it is dark, almost rotten wood. The fletching is made from black, black feathers, and the metal arrowhead is rusted and has a strong scent. Something coated the arrow tip, uh, a root, some sort of venomous root. Mm. Uh, and you, Iraniel, I'm not going to make you roll for this, you would know those are goblin arrows. Goblins. Used by goblins and orcs. And with an 18, I would say, looking around, you can tell that there was probably, um, you know, half a dozen defenders. Not all of them were warriors, though. Not all of them were equipped with bows and arrows and swords. Um, and there were many more enemies. Hard to get an exact number from just the arrows, but you can kind of, looking at the sort of the formation of where the arrows have been fired from and, and you know, fired into, like, you get the sense that this camp was sort of like a... I would say you, you would know it was ambushed. All right. We then cut to Borin. Hello. As you begin to rummage around and, you know, the, the light is beginning to fade as sunset comes, um, but your dwarven vision is quite keen in the dark and you begin looking around. But it's a strange sensation, like the ring almost tugs you in a, in a direction. And you almost at first think like you stumble like you tripped on a root or something like that, but you look down and there's nothing there, but it almost felt like it almost pulled you. And it, it just so happened that as it did, you catch um, a, a case, a scroll case, like a messenger's case, and you would recognize it because you being a herald and a messenger yourself, it's been hidden um, uh, in the tent itself, um, like a flap of clothing, but it's like not a place that you would normally hide something like this. Um, it's like a bedroll and it's been wedged inside the bedroll and then dunked in mud, almost to make it look not worth taking. Somebody hid this intentionally knowing, like trying to make it so that it wouldn't be taken. Um, and so it's been thrown into like a puddle of mud in the corner of the tents, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, but you spot this scroll case just sticking out of the wrapped up fur, kind of stinky fur bedroll. Um, and when you pull it out, you find inside a single piece of parchment and it is very hastily written and there's blood spatter across it. And it just says, uh, orcs, uh, wolves, uh, the hills. Wolves. The hills. Uh, what what language is it written in? It's, it's written in it's written in um, in Western, so human kind of common language. Um, looks like whoever was here managed to write this as they were being attacked, mm -hmm. and then hid it. But like, Ooh. it is only by the nature of that ring or that that strange stumble that yeah. you had that you would have found this. Like, mm -hmm. as a point, that didn't exist in my notes. <laughs> But because it's a magical <laughs> success, you get something. Okay. Right? So, yeah, you find that in there. Um, um. As you begin to kind of talk and look over to Araniel, Bobby, you're investigating the tracks. Um, and you get that information. Um, it's up to you whether you want to share that. But, like, uh, you kind of see Araniel and, and the dwarf uh, beginning to kind of regroup and, and culminate as the sun is now nearly fully set. Um, you know, you've maybe got, like, 20, 30 minutes. Um, you do notice as well, uh, all of you, um, Bungo especially because of your nature of a healer, um, the blood in the water is running from a little bit upstream, but not too far. Maybe just sort of on the corner around here, but like, you know. Isn't, is it just, is it red blood? It's not like red orc blood. blood? No, no it's, it's just... red blood. Hobbit, dwarf, or, or human or elf blood. Um. Ooh, we still look good. Um. <laughs> I've got a new ear. I don't know where in West Country now. <laughs> well, Hello, uh, that's <laughs> Hello. Boring. Boring, yes. yes. Um, la Lady Iraniel, uh, I found a note. It's covered in blood. Um, it, it says three of my least favourite things, uh, in no particular order. Orcs, wolves and the hills. Hills is one of your least favourite things? I don't like that. I prefer mountains. <laughs> hills. Uh, sure. Anyway. Yes, uh, I found uh, arrows that Definitely goblins. 
have, have attacked here. Goblins and orcs working together with wolves. Wonderful. Can I sort of look heroically to the sunset and say mm-hmm. four of them on horse on walk back? <laughs> At least twelve of them running around. But I think they're survivors. I, I count only three dead. Three, three dead of the, the orcs or the, the whoever poor bugger was here. Yeah, there's no, the there's no bodies here, buggers. but you think <laughs> that you, there's no, there's no bodies here, but you think three fell, and their bodies are gone. Oh. As a, to, to make that clear, three of them died in hmm. this battle. Oh, their bodies are now gone. Bodies. Three. Do you think that there were six people in this camp, but three are missing? But three oh, okay. died and their bodies are gone. Do, do 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 orcs and goblins? I mean, certainly wolves. Do they normally take? Bodies with them? Uh, you guys can make. Um, I think this would be nature or history. Uh, Bryony, you will get advantage on this. Oh, you get a plus two to this because they are your favoured uh, enemy, basically. So you get a plus two extra to the roll. It says advantage on intelligence checks about all. Yeah, so you get advantage and a plus two. Nine. Nine. <gasps> Natural 20. Oh, Bryony! <laughs> Aren't you glad Bobby's here? What was it, Bobby Apple? Bobby, Bobby Apple Bobby Apple Door. Apple Door. Apple Door. Apple Door. Apple Door. I don't know as much, but what I do know is about orcs. You do know about orcs. <laughs> what do we get on the other side of the table? Ten. Ten? Din roll. Din roll. All right, so Bobby, you would know, I mean, and, and Uraniel would probably, um, you would know at least a, a basic amount as well. But, um, I mean, yeah, orcs and goblins do eat, eat people. That is something that has happened. Tastes like man flesh. It meets back on a menu, boys, etc. Say it. Um, <laughs> but I think that Bobby, when you know wargs are involved, mm-hmm. when you found the warg tracks, yeah. more than likely that the dead sense. were taken to feed the wargs. That makes uh... sense. Now that you say it, that just. Mm. And, 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 <laughs> I, and I think sense. the two of you would also know that, like, yeah, wargs and orcs and goblins align. When it like, but there has to be a kind of like almost like a tra- equivalent trade, right? Like likely the orcs and goblins are promising food to the wargs in exchange for working with them. Um, but you do notice uh, the other thing for you, Bobby, is uh, none of the impressions on the ground of the dead would match Deanna's oh. features. Nice. Um, she is not here. But you don't think she fell here either. All right, then keep your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good, very good. Yes, very As good. you guys uh, begin, you sort of gather up and you're sharing this information. Um, what what do you guys want to do? Is this just like thing? Do you want to explore where the blood's coming from, or is this like are you going to try and gather like you know plan your next move? What what are you guys doing? What's everyone doing at this moment? I can I look in the cooking part? <laughs> yeah. Just look for snacks. You, you pop the cooking pot over, <laughs> um, and you find. It's not like that. No, no, no. This is perfect <laughs> Hobbit thinking, and I think only a Hobbit would think of this. But you pop the lid open, and there's like um, a stew, and it's maybe a day old. Like you can tell, like it's cold, mm. but like it's not turned rancid. Like nah, nah, it's that day old. Wait, and, and a one? Hobbit is literally the only one who can be like day old. This food. <laughs> <laughs> they just know. I'll uh, try and siphon some of that into. Pouch I have, like a, <laughs> a, a, a wait, it's not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's a stew. It's, yeah, it is a not. stew. It won't go in a pouch. Cram it in. She's <laughs> trying. Okay. okay. I'll get some of the liquid, or, or I'll try and reheat it maybe, and we can. You can share pour it. out your water skin and fill it with stew. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, day old stew. Day old stew. Put that in your inventory. Day okay. one. Yes. Oh, Portion of day old God. stew. They say the flavors get better after a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's like if it's heated. Yeah. Um, With chunks. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so like, so yeah, like Bobby, like a uh, bungo. You're like, yeah, about a day old this stew. Fascinating talent. Fascinating. If there's survivors, we should try and find them. Oops. Yes. But also, we should be quick because works. The, the sun is about to set, and yes. Yeah. This did happen yes. yesterday, so we ain't got a lot of time. Mm-hmm. We sure. don't want the blood attracting anything worse either, so we should go see where it's coming from. Sure. So do you want to go do that, and then Raniel's going to search for the survivors, like see maybe find tracks for the survivors? Yeah. Okay. And then what are Bobby and Bungo going to do? Do you guys want to help? Don't forget, you can always take the help action yeah. advantage. I'm going with the human. Sure. Although they're both human. Doesn't seem technically one's a Dunedain, but I'm going with the man human. Yeah. <laughs> um... Going with the man. <laughs> All right. Uh, because 
blood. Oh, I don't like blood. Why am I going with the blood? I'm going with the blood. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Yes. And then Bungo, what do you want to do? I'll go over Raniel. Okay. All right. Go have a look. Okay. Sure. All right, in that case, uh, can I get a hunting roll from Iraniel to try and find the tracks of these survivors? And then uh, for Bobby and uh, Borin, um, you won't need to make a roll because you're just going to find the body. Oh. You do that. But Yay. you might just... <laughs> Yay, we <laughs> found the body! Uh, uh, the, the hunting. Ten. Ten total. Would you want to spend a fellowship point? Can, spend the can, resource. Can, oh, you can did have an advantage. Did you roll with advantage? Why do I... Oh, because oh, um, help, Bungo's help, helping. Helping. Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm and you small, do have that so as well. I can see the ground. Yeah, you do have your um your bardic inspiration basically your rhymes. That was all. worse. That was a four. So uh, ten. Thirteen. Thirteen. Thirteen is enough. Thirteen is just enough. Just better than a ten. <laughs> it's better than a ten. It's just enough. Um, you do find you find two sets of tracks, uh, leading north. Okay. What? Mm, that's that way. Uh, yes, it was sort of this way actually. This is technically the the east, okay. so yeah, more this way actually, the north side. This way. Um, is that going back towards Bree? It is, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It would actually be, in fact, Iraniel would know this. Looking at your, you know, if you take a moment to consult your maps, north directly from here leads into the Barrow Downs. Oh. As you have that realization um, and you see the they tracks, up. <laughs> um, you and I'd say that it ran, actually, no, with the 13, you just know there's two tracks, two people. You don't know any details about them. Um, the For Bobby and Borin, you guys travel up here. So I have you guys. So uh, Bungo and Iraniel are sort of searching for tracks around here. Um, Bobby and Borin. You must have to come up into the river itself because you find just a little ways up nor- uh, to the north, um, just ever so slightly off the map, but I'm going to put you on the corner, uh, you find a body. Yep. It was in the water, looked like it ran from the battle, but was, um, and you can see that she has arrows in her back and she's lying down in the water, but it looks like maybe the water kind of obscured her or like they just didn't grab the body here because she's just lying face down in the river, basically. Mm-hmm. And that's why the blood was, was streaming into the water. Um, it's hard to tell much information um, just looking at the body face down in the water. You see about three arrows protruding from her back, the same type of arrows that Araniel pulled out of the tree, the goblin arrows. Um, she looks to be dressed as, uh, she has like leather armor, um, she has a quiver on her ar- on her on her hip, actually. A quiver of arrows. There's four arrows remaining, um, and there is uh, maybe a sword scabbard as well with a sword in it. Um, what do you guys do? Um, can I roll them over and see if it's anyone I would mm-hmm. recognise, like another? Yeah. So you kind of breach into the water, and with a psh, you hear the water kind of splash as you pull the body out, and there is a kind of moment of relief as it is not Deanna. Uh, this appears to be maybe one of the rangers or one of the sort of like, you know, wardens um, who was camped here. Uh, the ones that you were, you were hoping to meet up with and discuss what you'd been learning about the area. Um, but this is not somebody you personally knew. But she's, uh, she, she, like I said, she's got like leather armor, a blade and arrows, but yeah, she looks like she was struck from behind whilst trying to run. Um, can I take the arrows? Yeah, yeah, you can take the four arrows, yeah. Thank Add you. four arrows to your quiver. Um, Kind of silent. What about Borin? Is Borin anything? Um, I guess like while um, Bobby is doing that, I'll just be kind of like keeping watch, like just sure. like you know, just make because uh, knowing that we're in a dangerous area, sure. at the site of a battle, maybe there's great stuff. What's your passive perception? Passive, ten. Ten. All right. Um, well, you'll keep it. But it's good to know you're keeping watch. Yeah. Right? You're yeah. just kind of like trying to keep alert around. Um, and it's a great thing that you say that. Uh oh. Because <laughs> Uh-oh. I need everybody to make a perception check. Bobby, you can have advantage. Uh, sorry, not Bobby. Borin, you can have advantage because you were actively preparing. A smart boy. Why oh, is this such a good thing? I had advantage. <laughs> I got roll above a ten today. It's gonna come back in the second half. It's gonna swing round, swings and roundabouts. Perception. Perception. Okay. Perception. Yeah. Uh, I rolled with advantage a one and an eighteen. It's a good job that you have advantage, yeah. otherwise I'd be adding a point. But 18, good to know. Um, Bungo. 21. 21. Bobby. Four. Four. And then Araniel. 11. 11. But not a natural one. Did you roll a natural one, Bobby? They old. Did you roll <laughs> a one, roll... Bobby? I No, uh, it's a two. It's a two? Yes. Good. 
I must know. <laughs> oh, Sauron was <laughs> must know. He needs Sauron is upon you. <laughs> so, unfortunately, the two more seasoned warriors are caught unaware. Ha! Um, Look, I can't roll I right now. You are entranced either by thinking about these survivors, thinking about what's happened here, or maybe it's in that moment as you're turning yeah. the body over and there's that fear of like, is this my friend um, that distracts you? But Boren and Bungo, you hear <laughs> the soft splashing of the water in the distance. You hear the rustle of bushes, maybe a low rumbling growl. <sighs> And then suddenly, the blare of a war horn. <laughs> As I hear <laughs> you hear and see things oh approaching from the tree line across the ford, back the way you came. Oh, they've been following us. More man things have come. More meat for the hills. <laughs> As. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Oh, these minis are sick. Oh, they got little dudes on them. I love them. on them. I love them. Oh, we war again. Three. Oh no! Wogs with goblins riding upon their backs. Wog riders. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <tell them. laughs> and that is where we're gonna roll initiative. <laughs> Not one! No! Seven! No! Oh no! Get your sour on sheet! Wow. <laughs> He's coming! I rolled well this time. <laughs> I need to look into the rules of what happens because it's getting close. Sauron is here! Oh, Sauron's shit. coming! He's it's just turned up yet. in his can... full armor. He's like, hello. Uh, you say well, well, when Tom and Trot are back. So can... Yeah, I'll say, well, Tom and Trot, Trot won't be back, but Tom will be back. I might set up Sauron. Uh, so let me. I've like, set up this in the Queen. Yeah. I'm such a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> so hot right now. Oh, oh my no. god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Be like, uh, take me! <laughs> I'll be one of your faithful! <laughs> Can I have a quick oil painting with you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> and the walls can have me. <laughs> oh my god. Right. Oh no. Uh, Bobby, what was your initiative, please? 18. 18. Iranial. 18. 18. Uh, which of the two of you has the higher decks, Probably please? You. Yeah, um, you. Bobby. Bobby does. All right. You are both, unfortunately, surprised this round, so you are not going to get to act in the first turn, unfortunately. You are caught unawares. I'm not having a good day. Got in. Nine. Nine. Bungo. Three. Uh, oh, <laughs> two who, who were like, oh, two who saw it coming. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, all right. There's a hey. Oh, yeah. That one. That's a walk. Uh, uh, it's walking. <laughs> I don't like the way they just walk. Just doing like a double take, just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? A what? A walk? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> it's it's a right. <laughs> so, uh, at this point, you see all three because, like, normally, Iraniel and Bobby, your reactions. Normally would be faster, but distracted by tracking the survivors or turning over the body in the river, distracted by what's happening, you are taken by surprise as the horn blares and out of the tree lines uh, come these war riders. Uh, Borin and Bongo not being combat ready, not being you know skilled warriors, you just have that moment where you're just slower to react. You hear it, but you can't bring your your weapons to bear before all three of the riders begin to barrel, jumping across the rivers oh, as they basically get in position to begin to fire at you. However, it is time for a break. So when we come oh. back from break, we will continue the battle you. at San Ford. And that is where we're going to take a five minute break, everybody. We will see you in part two very, very shortly. Take care and goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, welcome back to part two of our Lord of the Rings uh, little mini adventure. Um, we are in, we are on the San Ford. 
as a number of Wark Riders oh, no. have appeared and have uh, begun to assail our company. Um, and that's where we're going to jump straight back in. We are in initiative. Um, we have got a couple of people under surprise. Um, and that means that our Wark Riders are literally all going first. Yeah. Yeah. This one is going to come over here. I'm going to leap over this. No, no. No! Rush straight up Ooh. to Bobby and Boren. Um, you can see, so a couple of things about the battle. The rivers itself of all the water, um, if you are moving through that, if you are uh, a tall person, like <laughs> a human or a, ho- uh, a human or an elf or an orc. Oh, it's literally tall versus small. Uh, <laughs> it costs. <laughs> That's not usually what I'm. The one. <laughs> usually, I'm the five foot three one who can't reach. It still it costs double movement to move through the water. Uh, so five feet becomes ten feet, for example. Um, if you are a hobbit or a dwarf, uh, because you're little, um, you drown. it counts. As, it's actually three times movement. So five feet is fifteen feet of movement. This is too real. Um, <laughs> The trees and the walls, if you're behind them and someone's shooting arrows at you, you do get cover, nice. uh, which is a good thing. Like these uh, two of them are equipped with bows. The one that's charged towards Bobby and Borin does have a bow on his back, but has pulled out basically uh, what looks to be like a um, like a, a serrated knife the goblin's wielding, but the wag itself has got its big massive jaws. Um, and that's charged directly through. It, st- it stood in the water, like ready to pounce on you both. Um, but the other two look like they are literally drawing bows back. Um, that is it. It is it is sunset, so it is night time. Um, so if you don't have an ability where you can see in the dark or a light source, if you're attacking at range, you're going to be at disadvantage. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Mm. Um, but let's do some attacks first. And uh, let's start with Bobby and Borin. Um, and uh, the goblin on top is going to look down and he kind of yanks on the reins. He's just like, ah, taste dwarf flesh, my precious. And the wolf <laughs> is, the wog, sorry, is going to try and bite Borin. Um, as point, yes, go on. Do I get a reaction if I'm surprised? You do. I'm going to say that I will still allow <clears throat> you to take a reaction, yes. Okay. Would you like to use your uh, cool thing, your protection fighting style? Yeah. All right, that means you get a plus two to your AC against oh, this wee. attack. Uh, Bodin, uh, so the wag is going to try and bite you. <sighs> 16. Exactly, but with a plus two, I was going to say, would normally hit. So it looks like these terrifying jaws are about to bite down on your head, and then Bobby just, uh, the shield embeds into the wag's mouth, like wee. knocking it to the side as he protects you from it. <laughs> It kind of hisses and shouts. Um, that is the wog. Uh, it's taken its attack. It missed. Uh, so the goblin is going to now try and knife Bobby. Oh, I can't get really <laughs> that. I got nothing. Uh, that is going to be a twenty-four to hit, not a crit. I rolled a nineteen. I believe that yeah. uh, uh, will hit you. <laughs> yeah, um, and because technically the wog is its ally, he gets sneak attack. Wow. <laughs> Scary. Uh, that is going to yeah, be scary. ten points of damage <laughs> as this uh, knife. He kind of re- leans down in the in the saddle and rah, plunges the knife into you, uh, trying to swipe towards you. Um, the other two are going to just uh, the wags are going to kind of keep themselves ready. They're not going to attack, and they're going to shoot towards Iraniel and Bungo. One attack each <gasps> with their bows. Bungo. That is a, that was cocked, I'm gonna re-roll that. Uh, that is a 17 to hit you, I'm afraid, Bungo. Really? All right, and then Iraniel, uh, that is only a seven to hit no. you. All right, Bungo, yep. you're gonna take three points of damage, but then I need a constitution oh, saving no. throw, please. Oh, where's the arrows? Zero, seven. Seven. Oh, I need to check something now. Ooh, that is less, that's failing it by five or more. So, you take the three Uh-oh. points of damage, you are poisoned, which means you have advantage on attack rolls, ability checks. Okay. And then also, because you failed the poison by more than five, you cannot regain hit points and have disadvantage on death saving. Oh, that's Max! Cool. Yeah. That's really, that's, that's really okay. punishing. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's goblin shit. So I love that. as the goblin arrow thuds into you, yeah. the actual arrow like kind of just scratches you, and you're like, oh, that wasn't so. And then suddenly the world begins to spin, oh. and you feel sick as this horrid, infected wound is left. Ooh. 
you, like Aragorn, parry the other arrow out of the air as it comes sailing towards you, taking you by surprise. And then you look over and see Bungo almost like wavering and like, you know, uh, halting for a moment. Yes, do check your abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, can I use my Brave in a Pinch ability? You absolutely can. So uh, when a hostile creature or effect imposes a condition on you, you suffer exhaustion or you drop to less than half HP, you gain inspiration. You gain inspiration. So you have inspiration, so remember Ooh. you can use that to get an advantage or reroll, basically. Oh, I have an inspiration. Don't forget you have your fellowship die as well. Yeah. Just don't forget Not those. five of them. But that is our attackers done. Uh, and that begins uh, so that we go to Borin, because this is still in the first turn where we have the surprise round. So Borin. Can I reach the goblin or am I more worgen? Uh, you can attack the goblin. They do get a slightly higher AC whilst they are mounted. But you can attack the goblin directly. I think I'm going to stick to my strength and like go for the warg, like go for the ankles or mm -hmm. something. Sure. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so I'm going to use my axe. 14 to hit. Uh, 14 against the warg. Yeah. Is a hit. Yeah, boy. Bites into its flesh. And you do have an ally within five feet, so this will be sneak attack. Uh, eight points of Dimagios. Eight points of damage. The axe bites into the wog's flesh, and you hear it as it bites in deep and cuts through. Let me tell you, boy, I don't taste very good. Now piss off. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe him. No, will taste juicy, sweet. Look at his flesh. Fat dwarf. Piss uh. off. He <laughs> got fat. Uh, end of your turn, would you like to move or bonus actions or anything bottom? I feel like if I move, they're going to bite me, right? Yeah, I mean, like, you've, got, you've got a big sturdy man to protect you next to you. And I've got a big sturdy man to protect me, and he can give me sneak attack as well, so I'm going to stay where All right. I am. A big case, handsome man. A big handsome, handsome, handsome we man. We go to into... poor Bungo. <laughs> Bungo, Bungo. Um, can I scooch back 15 feet and go behind the wall? 5, 10, 15, absolutely. <laughs> So as you are a hobbit, uh, these walls, uh, you get plus five to your AC because yeah. you're small. Same for the dwarf, but it was the tallies only get plus two. Um, and then can I um, use my sling and try and uh, get the walk that's attacking um, Bobby and... Bobby. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's the range on your sling, does it say? 20. 5, 10, 20, No, 40, 20, sorry. 25, 30, 35, Just within range. Perfect. It is in the dark, but you already have disadvantage from poison, so, but just remember you have disadvantage on the attack roll. So, uh, lowest was 11, so 16. 16. Yeah, that's a hit. Still hits, though. Hell yeah. And you're going for the warg, yes? Yeah. All right. Uh, that is a three massive hit points. Massive hit points. Well, you know, you're a healer. You're not a, you're, yeah. I, I'm a doctor, but. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Um, a lover. <laughs> it strikes the warg in the head with a sharp stone and leaves like a bleeding cut. <laughs> It's like looking around, like trying to figure out where it came from. And the wall's like, ah, God, it's like, don't focus on that, kill this one. Um, so it's trying to call out to it. Uh, great, fantastic stuff, Bungo. Uh, anything else on your turn? Um, no, I'm There's only there, level two, though, but I don't yep. imagine you have too much. Right, brand, brand new round. Now, the surprise overcome. Danger immediate ahead of you. We have Bobby. Get in there, humans. Uh, can I swing up and hit the little guy off the back? You absolutely can. And they do count as orcs for your favoured foe. So nice. you'll get plus two damage on a hit. Am I rolling? Uh, D20. Yep, you want D20 plus your um, battle axe. Plus? battle axe? Uh, so I rolled 18, but is it plus the... No, that's for the damage, isn't it? That is for the... Yeah, so you get, oh. pl you get oh, a plus so five. Oh, so plus five. Yeah. What is that? 23. 23. 18 plus 5 is 23, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So even though it tries to use the wog to protect itself, your reach, you know, you're, you're a big strong human, the axe kind of slices through and cuts into the goblin on top. Um, and then the yes, please. Oh. Uh, two, two plus three, but does he count as yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. two? So. This is big math. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Seven. Seven points of damage to the goblin. As the axe buries into the goblin, it carves, leaving a gaping wound. It's like <laughs> black blood streaming out as it deals a grievous wound to the goblin. Um, as it does so. Uh, all right, all good, Bobby. Do you want to move? No, I'm going to stay next to. All right, you're going to try and protect little guy. Bobby. All right, my little guy. In case. <laughs> Iradiel. I'm trying to work out how to get across this river. Um, I mean, you, if you don't have the movement, you can try and jump across it. Uh, like you could, you could try and jump across uh, the, the can river. Can I try and jump across the river? 
So, what? well, don't forget, you I know. have the belt. I have the belt. belt. <laughs> so I get a plus four, a plus, plus D, D4. A D4 to Or athletics. you could use or one of your four. magical successes. So I would say if you use a magical success, you could literally jump 20 feet across this river. I'll oh. do that. I'll do that. Wait. <sighs> And then 5, 10, 15. Yep. <gasps> yes! <laughs> so, just as a point, so the belt of Beren strapped around Iraniel, you watch as she takes a few steps back and runs and leaps, and leaps 20 <laughs> feet across this river, just like bounding over it, propelled by some magical force. You land, you tuck and roll, you come running up, and the goblin is just bewildered and is not ready for this attack as you approach the warg. Uh, attack roll. What are you going for, the warg or the rider? The rider. Alrighty. Um, 17. 17 will still hit, even with the protection of the barding. Um, so... Uh, minimum of a five, though, on my dice. That's true. Five, six, Rolling seven, two nine damage. It's almost, as you leap, you tuck and roll, as you come up, the goblin's so surprised, Iraniel, one sweep, the goblin's head comes clean off. Oh, oh, yes. yes! Oh, yeah! Uh, you watch, it's just... It's like still stunned expression on its head as its nice. gob- as its head rolls. The warg almost seems to not really understand what's happened, but still looks like a dangerous threat. Yeah. Um, as you do so. All right, Aranial, anything else on your turn? No, I'm good. I'm good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with taking the goblin out. Going for the Hobbit! No, Bungo! Can't quite reach Bungo, but it's still in range for the bow. Um, So the Warg can't attack you. Right. Um, The others are all engaged in combat, so they are just going to stay where they are. Um, I'm going to go with uh, the one that's just run over to try and get close to Bungo. He's going to shoot you with his bow. Oh, still going to hit. That's a 21 to hit, I'm afraid. Oh, yep. Um, With his horn bow. Five points of piercing damage. No point making the con save, you're already poisoned. Yeah. Um, another five points of piercing damage. How is damage. Bongo doing? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, could be worse, but more. Could be worse. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Rhiannon does this. She's like, I'm on one hit point, but it's fine. And you're like <laughs> supervising it, it's okay. Okay, good. The warg against Raniel is oh, going hi. to try and bite you. Okay. Nine. No. Put the blade almost in its mouth, fending it back. <laughs> And then finally, uh, both the Wog and the Goblin against Bodin and uh, uh, Bobby. I think this time the Wog, having seen that you protected the Dwarf previously, the Wog's going to go for you, Bobby. Oh, no. Uh, that is a 21, I'm afraid. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. We're going to take six points of damage, and I need you to make a strength saving throw for me as well. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 19. 19, you're fine. So the the wog bites you, it gets a grip and it tries to drag you to the ground to knock you prone, but you resist. But Tilsix takes six points of damage, please. Um, um, And then uh, the goblin is going to go for Bodin. Oh, what? Wait, is that what you're on right now? Yeah. You were damaged before you came to us. No, I took ten in the first one. That's right, yeah, yeah, oh. did, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big hits, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, got shot by an arrow. Um, I did just attack Borin. Would you like to use your reaction Ooh, to yes. defend again? Uh, uh, I don't think it's unfortunately going to help, because that is still a 20 oh. to hit. Yeah, that's going to hit me. That's going to hit you. It's a nice thought, though. <laughs> it's only four <laughs> points of damage as the knife kind of plunges into you. Uh, I'm slightly worried about you right now. And then we go to Borin. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna keep stabbing the wargy. Alrighty. Um, yeah, the warg's looking pretty hurt. Yeah. When did you get shot by that? Uh, right at the beginning. No surprise. 12, 13, yeah. 14, oh, 15, 16. 16 hits. Really didn't and I can sneak though. attack. You can. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight points of damage. The axe this time rah, digs into the creature's chest and it kind of lets out this. Rah, rah, and then slumps to the ground. Nice. Uh, and the goblin is fall, falls off the mount. The goblin's still alive, but the warg did. Is he underwater, trapped underneath the warg? Mm. <gasps> Let's roll and find out. Yeah! <laughs> I will make an acrobatics check for the goblin. I will set the DC at 15, he gets a plus two. Mm-hmm. So if I roll a 13 or higher, he is not trapped under the warg. 
Oh, it was a four, and then it flipped to a 14. Ah! And he's just kind of like, he cuts his his bindings before yeah. he goes under. He is, however, in the river prone. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is a goblin, so it's harder for him to move in the water. Right. Um, but he is now prone in the water uh, below you. But yeah, the wag. <laughs> Ah, don't like a dinner that can bite back, huh? Thank you very much. Uh, we then go to Bungo. Um, oh, the bloodlust! <laughs> oh, Bungo's in a bit of trouble. Um, I'm, I'm just going to stay where I am because the wall can't get me here, so I'm... Ooh, uh, yeah, next okay. turn, next it can turn. step over that wall. Oh, okay. Um, um, I actually forgot you would have had plus five to your AC against that second attack because you were in the behind the wall. Oh. What would I that do? What, I can't remember what the... It was 20-something. It was 24? What's your 21. AC? 21. What's your AC? 15. So it would have helped. Still, helped. still no. just caught. Just. Not as much, um, but still just. So just you could keep... try and, like, hide, like, run and hide. Yeah. You I'll could do that, or you could just run to, like, your friends, or... I'll, I'll, I'll run and hide. Sure. Uh, where would you like to go? Uh, behind the, the little wooden pile. Yeah, so you go, like, over here? Yeah. Behind the little shelter? Sure. Get away from me, you rotter! All right, and then as a hi- you can make the hide, you can make a stealth check as the hide action. I shall. All right, see if this walk might be able to sniff you out one to see. Stealth. Oh, 21. 21, okay, noted. <laughs> 21 <laughs> stealth. I'm a brick. <laughs> 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 All right, so Bungo, you run, because uh, you probably would have disengaged, run, and then think. Actually, the wild can't hit you anyway, so you wouldn't need to disengage. So yeah, you run off, scurry into this shelter, into the woods, and <laughs> try and hide, yep. um, trying to hide from the wicked warg and the goblin. Uh, we then jump back up in the third combat round. Bobby. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna, like, bring my axe down on the prone, the prone goblin. goblin. Yeah, you have advantage, because he's prone. Oh, so you roll twice, take the highest. Ooh, uh, so 23. 23. Uh, roll damage, please. That definitely hits. Uh, this goblin was already pretty badly hurt oh. as well. Uh, four, five. Five more oh. points of damage. Six. I can do math. Six. Six points of damage. <laughs> With that, the axe buries deep into his back. <laughs> Twitches and then goes still. Goblin's dead. Yay. Yeah. Oh, so we don't get confused. But yeah, you watch as they go like, and then go still. <laughs> uh, Bobby, would you like to move? Yeah, can I? Uh, or bonus action as well. Um, I think I'll leave bonus action for now, but I'm gonna run to in between. Can I see where Bungo has gone? You can't see Bungo now. You saw Bungo run into these trees, but then vanished from sight. Okay. But you can see that this wag and goblin were chasing her. Um, I'll go like to the edge of the wall, I think. Okay, so it's 5, uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You could get to here, or do you want to be next to the, the wolf in I'll combat with it? I'll go next to them. To the wag. All right, so you run up, ah, axe and shield raised high like a, like a hero um, as you come charging across down the river to aid Bungo. Um, bonus action, no bonus action? No, yeah, I'll do it. I'll be sensible. I'll, okay. I'll uh, would you like to use your defiance? As I run along. Yeah, so <laughs> you, can, you have a special ability called defiance. <laughs> uh, so you can spend one of your hit dice. You have two d10, so you can spend one d10 and add three, and you get that many hit points back. Okay. It's like a little self heal. Six back. Six total? Yeah. Nice, you get six HP back. Um, and that does spend one of your hit dice. In that case, we then go to Iraniel. Hello. Facing the wag. I want to hit the wag, please. Sure. Go for it. Mm, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen to hit the wog is a hit. Woo! Uh, wog three. Uh, so same again, nine points of damage. Nine so points of damage. Five. Wog, tougher than a goblin. The blade you stab in, it cuts deep. But the creature, almost filled with a primal savagery, is still up and is enraged as it turns to try and bite you. Anything else on your turn? Mm, who's within 30 feet of me? I don't think. Uh, I don't 5, think. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Nobody. 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 Okay. Not yet. It's okay. All right. In that case, we go to the wog riders themselves. Uh, this wog is just going to turn on you, Iraniel. It's, it's fully ninja combat. This wog and the rider, the goblin looks around, and almost you see this moment of doubt where he's looking. He's two of his other, you know, uh, friendly goblins are dead. One of the wogs is down. He's seen like Bobby run over to him. I'm going to make a wisdom saving throw for this mm. goblin. 
one. Oh. <laughs> he is going to disengage. He's going to order the wog to disengage, and then he is going to run. No. Oh. And he is going to sprint off into the woods. You can try and pursue him. He's about 40 feet deep into the woods. In fact, no, he would dash. He's like 100 feet. He's out of line of sight. You can't see him anymore. He's in the deep in the tree line. Um, as he runs away. Uh, I just have the idea of Bobby running over like, ah, I swear there was a war kid. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I mean, you, you literally, it right, rears up and he's like, run, ah, run. Ah. And then they begin to flee. Um, all right, so that is that. The wag remaining with Iraniel. It's going to attack. It's going to try and bite you. Six to hit. Yeah. Ting, psh, blocking nice. the the claws and the teeth with the blade. Uh, the blade. The blade. Borin. Mighty Borin. I think I'm going to shoot Zavorg because being a dwarf and going through the water, I think I'm just going to drown. Sure. Uh, so you're going to pull out your bow, mm -hmm. right? So that's uh, so uh, instead of moving, you'd basically swap your axe and your bow around. Mm -hmm. um, because you're a dwarf, I'm not going to give you disadvantage because of the darkness. I think dwarves would be able to kind of see in the dark a little bit. Um, so yeah, so you just make a normal bow attack, please. 12 plus 4 is 16. 16 hits, and there is an ally within five feet, so you get sneak attack. Wait, is that me? If you're attacking this one. Oh, it's oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because the other one you can't I see, the other one's disappeared. I thought it was if it's in type with me, no. but... Uh, I think that's a six. It's got a beholder on it. Yeah. That's a six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven points of damage. Wow. Uh, the arrow flies in, taking the wog through the eye, just as you're preparing to hit a rail. <laughs> Nice. The wog is slain by Bodin's arrow. That's two! <laughs> <laughs> the yes. Uh, perfect. With Killed most of the last one. That, <laughs> we're going to jump out of initiative. As the other wog is fleeing, none of you are in danger of dying. Um, the other wog, you can try and give chase. The wog is faster than you guys. Mm -hmm. Without horses, you yeah. won't be able to catch it. No. Um, it flees off to the west. Okay. Um, can I just call out to Bungo and just say, "It's okay, Bungo. Are you are you hurt? Oh, are they gone, Bobby? Are they gone? They're gone. They're safe." You see, slightly dishevelled, coming out of the the bushes, leaves in her hair, <laughs> little Bungo, looking, <laughs> looking pale, very pale, um, sweating. Uh, you don't feel good, Bungo. No. Not at all. I got a shot of an arrow and I've come over all funny. They poison their arrows, goblins. Oh, no. Would I know if there was any way to treat that? You from... can do a medicine check for me. <laughs> a whole plus you can, zero. You can spend advantage, your fellowship points. That's cocked. Okay. Uh, 16. 16. Do you want to spend anything or like... Uh, no, I'm going to just... No? All right. 16. There is definitely something you can do. It's going to take a bit of time. Okay. Um, if you forage, especially where you've got like trees and stuff nearby, I would say if you can forage and find certain herbs... King's Fall. Probably not King... <laughs> King's Fall is a good herb for this, but it would probably be more than just King's Fall. Oh, it's Fall. a weed. It's a weed. Um, uh, but you reckon that you can probably, with a treatment of um, the right herbs, which you would need to forage, and the right application of using medicine to apply it, um, with about an hour's rest, Bungo can probably shake off the worst of the poison. Um, I have a herbalism kit. Okay, could yeah. I forage in that? Uh, <laughs> could I forage in my kit? You, I would say you could spend a use of that instead of foraging, yes. Oh, okay. Do you want to spend a use of that, though? It, and it would take an hour. Yes, yeah. So, you know, you, a bungo will need to at least like rest for about an hour. Um, and it is night now. It's it's fully night. They alerted people to to this area. The horn was sounded. We can't stay in this position. We need to find somewhere safe to help you recover, and then we can go on. Mm -hmm. You know that those two survivors headed north. You could begin to follow those tracks and rest along the way. We could try and do that. I agree. In agreement, everybody. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, because yeah. uh, keep in mind, remember in this system, if you want to take like a proper like D and D long rest, mm. you have to spend twenty four hours in a single yeah. location. Yeah, no, we're not so, safe here. Yeah, so but it, so it would count oh, as a short safe. rest. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you would basically you can do it whilst you're on the road, basically. Mm -hmm. So is the plan? Do you want to try and follow the survivors' tracks north, or do you want to go somewhere else? Like I don't know if there's the, you guys are free to do whatever you want. I don't know what else is in the area that's close enough that's safe. 
Um, but I guess it would be consulting the map. <clears throat> you have a map. Um, Sarnford is quite remote. It's on the other side. That's the Shire. I know. <laughs> Sarnford is kind of remote. Uh, it lies in southern Carolan. Um, yeah. It's quite a trek to get to anywhere civilized, unfortunately. It really is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I think while the humans are considering like human stuff, but, human, what um, should we do? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just be like fussing over uh, Bungo. Bungo, my sweet soft Bungo, you're poisoned. <laughs> poisoned with a poison <laughs> most foul. I'm so unwell. Oh, can you see me? Can you see how many fingers I'm holding up? <laughs> Eight. Oh, oh, what is a calamity? I'm she can't see! She uh, can't see! And the wolf sings. Oh Jesus Christ. And the wolf sings to the north, the sun will sing in the north. Wait, what was that? Sweet Bungo, say that again. When the wolf sings, when the wolf howls, the sun will sing in the north. That's what that elven fellow said to her. Uh, the knowledge. She's re- the knowledge. The sun will sing. Maybe we have to go north or something. Uh, I don't know what to do. The sun or something. But, well, the, the wolf howls, the wargs, they howled when they attacked us. I said so, in the darkness you will find death. <laughs> I'm finding it now. <laughs> I go. We're going north and we're finding death. I'm taking on her accent. Galadriel will come find me. Oh my god. I've always May I ask her. what the plan is? Do you want to travel north? To try and follow these tracks. You don't know how far they go. I mean, if uh, fleeing from battle, they may probably couldn't have gone that far, but you, I, you just don't know. I vote for going north. Yeah, especially as that's going into like. All right. I tell you, I am from here. <laughs> we just came from here. Yes, we really messed up the inn. Didn't hurt leaving, so let's go back. <laughs> In that case, if you would like to follow the trail north. We will begin another journey. Ah. Uh, so, because Briny wasn't here, I'm kind of say that it's what you're doing because I want to crack, crack on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I don't. Really I mean, unless know there's something like is, a really yeah, so. if you don't have like a strong idea, um, you because you can rest. You'll I just rest want to way. fix the hermit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dwarf goes north. If you don't want to rest here, yeah. then travelling north it's not and safe resting rest along the way. Because no. these are like this is the people I came to meet, isn't it? So I want to track them down and see yeah. where they. Yeah. Yeah, and Deanna wasn't here as well. <laughs> All right, so as a refresher on the journeying rules, uh, to travel north, you're going to be following the tracks. You don't know how long this journey's going to be, but so I'm not going to draw a map on this one because you don't really know where you're going to be going, but we're still going to make the rolls. Um, so for Bryony, uh, in, a, in a journey, um, there are four roles that have to be fulfilled. Uh, one person has to be the guide. Uh, uh, they are in charge of all decisions discerning the route, rest, and supplies. The hunter is in charge of finding food in the wild. The lookout is in charge of keeping watch. And the scout is in charge of setting up camp and opening new trails. Uh, the, each of those roles has to be filled. You as a warden can fulfill multiple roles. Um, you can fulfill one additional role at no penalty. So you can do two things. Because oh, um, I can't do any of these. Okay. Well, you everyone can, yeah. but like it's your best odds aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the thing. Um, the the way this is going to begin is the guide has to basically make the first travel check um, to see how we crack on and if we have any problems along the way. Um, I vote, lady. Well, this time, well, now you have a difference could, because with a warden, warden, it could be good to do this because Bryony does get advantage. So uh, Bobby gets advantage on these. Yeah. Yeah. What's your bonus to travel? Plus two. Plus three. But you, if you get advantage, you would, yeah, because it counts as uh, a light skill. But I, I, I want to say down with the patriarchy. Sure. <laughs> You're fearless. I mean, I'm Aniel supporting is the, the strong, independent woman. <laughs> I can leap over uh, the river and behead a goblin. I don't need to That's take my the journey. With it. <laughs> yeah, go on, Ronnie. I'm being silly. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's your, you guys choose. Because yeah. don't forget, like, it does mean Bungo, as poorly as Bungo is, Bungo's going to have to do one of these roles yeah. and will well, have disadvantage I, on any checks. Can I be hunter and guide? Uh, you absolutely can, yeah. Because yeah. this is, like, my neck of the woods. Sure, so. yeah, absolutely can. What's the other one? What was the... Uh, lookout and scout. I would like to be a scout, because lookout, don't give me lookout. Yeah. <laughs> and also, it does mean that if um, Bobby is going to take on two roles, it means Bungo can choose to just... Give advantage to somebody and not have to make rolls. Like I, the, yeah, I can I can do the look out, look out sure. one then. All right, and then Bungo, is there somebody you would like you, you choose one person you want to help if you would like to? You can also still take on a role if you really want. Help me, I 
think I'll, yeah, I'll help. I'll help Borin. All right, she'll help Borin with the scale. We'll be fine. All right, so in that case... <laughs> yeah, I'm rolling under 10 most we of the can, time. We can do fine. another fellowship point. Yeah, you got fellowship point. points. We got five fellowship points. Yeah, you got one back, don't forget. Um, so, Bobby, uh, I need you to make a travel roll. You do have advantage because we are in your, uh, your, your lands, your specialty. Uh, 13. 13. All right. So it is uh, so it is a failure, which means that there is going to be an event before you arrive at your destination. Um, but more importantly, so as you begin to follow the, the pack north, um, the first day you travel north, uh, and you probably would travel a little bit through the night, and then you would find somewhere to rest for poor Bungo and then start the next day, or as soon as you could, like at first light, basically. So you try and find somewhere sheltered and secured to rest for the evening. Um, did you want to try and heal Bungo's poison whilst you rest this night? This poor sweet... Yeah, I'm just putting leeches yeah. on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Not Bovril. I was going to say, so your leech craft ability, I was going to say, normally it restores hit points. I don't have a problem with it removing poison, but I'm going to say you can't do it on yourself. Like you can't use your own knowledge on your to heal yourself. <laughs> so if anybody else was afflicted, you good could try, heal them. Boys, good yeah. try. Uh, yeah, just it's not leeches. just putting leeches on. It is, it is a whole art, a skill. Harry, the, Harry, there is looking a bit green. You should probably not. No. Uh, no. Oh, I've contaminated Harry. <laughs> so uh, for this to work. Um, no it's actually going to be Bobby. If you're using your herbalism kit, it has to be you who makes this roll. It is a medicine check, um, and the DC is going to be the same as the DC it was for the poison. Maybe Bobby shouldn't do it. Well, you're the one with the medicine <laughs> kit. You're the one with the herbalism yeah. kit, so it has to be. I got nothing. I got rings. But that's and if it. you fail, you just waste a use of it. You're not going to make the poison. Oh, unless you roll. Well, unless it's five Don't. or worse. <laughs> How many roll? uses do I have of it? Uh, I believe it has ten uses. You have a Oh, and that's a waste of time. Oh, 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 oh,
Uh, what check is this? Is it just Just like roll a... a d20 and tell me the lowest result. Do you want to do it? Or we could roll one each. One roll each. one each. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Spice it up. Yeah, it's fun. Let's hands while we do it. There we go. Okay, ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> they are the two. Do I need to increase the amount of sound roll? No. Uh, we just rolled both under a ten. Single digits. Yeah, Single digits. I got a oh, tell me. six. And I got an eight. So six would be the lowest. So, the event that occurs is ill choices. No! Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's just my life. Like, you know. uh, all right, I need, uh, I need one of you to make. Um, this is hard terrain. Uh, uh, no, this is uh, uh, open terrain. Yeah. Um, I need uh, one of you to make a, a explore roll. Ooh. Explore. Mm. I have zero. I have plus two. You go. All right, Bungo. <laughs> now, this means that Bungo will... <laughs> yeah. so we're both going to suffer the consequences of this, so... Four total. Four total. Yep. Do you want to spend a fellowship point and re-roll it? Or we're we gonna leave it. We've got five, so we you've also got inspiration as well. I've got inspiration. We could use. Let's use a fellowship we point. Can we're save doing it. it. You might need it. We're, do, we're doing right. fellowship point. All right. Give okay. me a reroll. Oh, that's better. Fifteen, seventeen total. Does succeed. Worth the good thing you do. <laughs> uh, that, that prevents you both from gaining a shadow point. Oh. oh. So we just went off on a lovely adventure and fell down a hole and then so, thought about shadow. sad things. Ill choices. <laughs> Um, okay, well, this only affects if you fail, which you did. So, um, what you would probably come across is uh, as you are beginning to sort of approach near to the Barrow Downs, there is a moment where the two of you, as you are out helping to kind of scout and look for shortcuts and things like that, you know, uh, Bobby and Iraniel are back kind of on the trail, kind of planning, you know, or looking for tracks and finding things. But you guys step out a moment, and it's then that you see in the hills, you're certain that are those. They look like elves carrying chests full of gold. <laughs> I like gold. Into the hills. I love gold. And like Borin's almost, and with that re-rolling the fellowship, Borin, you're like, oh, we should go with them. Like they, they you know, we, they could help us. And it's Bongo. You're like, no, 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 because you can see through them. Oh. And you see in the light as it begins to kind of fade. You're like, they're they're, they're dead. And Borin, you suddenly are like, oh, as you realise that this trail, this procession of ghostly elves, is not real and was almost trying to lure you down a dark path towards one of these barrows. But but the gold isn't dead. Gold oh, never God. died. Was never there, there was never any gold. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. Nice. This is my worst nightmare. There's no gold. That event, you succeed. So there's no ill ill consequences. Oh, thank God. Uh, it does increase the fatigue save of the, the journey. Uh, because you step into the Barrow Lands, the Barrow Downs, however, uh, this is what's called a dark land. Oh, and no. it means that we automatically generate several other events. Oh, Two cool. More events. Oh, cool, cool. So for this one, I'm going to roll. I'm going to see which ones we get. <gasps> Spiders. So this will fall to the lookout. Oh. Daniel. Uh, can you roll 2d20 and tell me the lowest, please? Because this is a dark land, so it is uh, you get disadvantage on the event. Nine. Nine. A mishap. I rolled an eighteen on the other one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a mishap. Uh, I need you to make a perception check for me, please, Iraniel. Fifteen. Fifteen is a success, just barely a success. Which what that prevents is it does not. It would have increased the fatigue save by even more and cost you a day of journey as well. Oh, wow. okay. nice. um, Good look out. So for this, as you enter the Barrow Downs, uh, as you are making your way, following these tracks, and these are like big hills. You can see like the the kind of shaped mounds with tombs and things dotted around it. But it is also a pretty wild, rough land. There's still bushes and forests and little copses of trees here and there. But as you're stepping, Iraniel, you are kind of leading them down a path, kind of providing being the lookout, and you happen to spot uh, just before Bobby. Uh, steps onto an, un an uneven looking piece of ground, you realize that that ground is unstable and you kind of stop Bobby and as he his foot just touches it, uh, almost like a sinkhole <laughs> opens up into a dark cavern underneath. And it would have been quite the fall and quite dangerous and you managed to You're welcome. <laughs> prevent Bobby from falling down into it. Um, so that is the event for then. And then the last event. There's a lot of events. Is going to be our hunter. 
Oh, oh we lucked out on the first one with nice. So you did. So you got very, very lucky point. on those. We did. Uh, I need Bobby to make a uh, to roll two d twenty and tell me the lowest, please. Um, one. Uh, Sauron's <laughs> coming! No! Sauron's coming! Sauron's coming! Wow. Sauron's coming home! Sauron's coming home! Home of their refreshments, what he brings! Tis oh, the season to the one ring! The one ring. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Sauron is coming. No, oh. he's gonna make a TikTok out of that night. I need to, I need to think of the lyrics because it's like, I'm this trying to think of like shit. three rings for elves and seven for dwarves! <laughs> Just for some Bobby. extra pressure, we should really have like Sam turn the lights all red every time we roll a natural one. No pressure, <laughs> Sam! <laughs> well, for a one, Bobby, the event you have rolled is terrible misfortune. Oh, no. <laughs> that sounds like it's the worst thing it could possibly be. I need you to make a hunting roll for me, please. Ooh. You shoot yourself in the foot and your foot falls off. <laughs> uh, and then you topple over into the hole. It is just, just barely a success. Oh, no! Oh, no. <laughs> um, the fatigue saving throw does still increase, though, for this journey, um, but you avoid uh, a greater harm. In this case, uh, nice. you would have had to make a dexterity saving throw. If you fail it, you immediately go to zero hit points. <gasps> wow. Um, and on a success, uh, you lose half your hit points. Oh my, oh god. my god. For what oh. reason? Uh, well, that's what we would have figured out. We would have like worked oh. out what the reason would have been. You fell down the hole. You're dead, so but this, I don't know how. It suggests in this, something went so badly that the company is trudging wearily and the target of the event risked being seriously harmed. Oh my god. The hunters were injured when a prey proved to be too dangerous. The scouts suffered harm from the extreme cold or a lookout fell from a tree while standing watch. So like you, something terrible. Fell over a tree. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sauron looked at you and it but, faked you. But <laughs> literally you died. do complete the journey despite oh, these Oh my rolls. god. Uh, that was a tough one. What I do need is a fatigue saving throw from everybody. Yep. Okay. The DC of which is 16. Oh, 16. So you have uh, you have a bonus and you have advantage. Con constitution. constitution saving throw for a fatigue saving throw. Um, <clears throat> 15, 16, 17. No, it's a 14. Remember you've got fellowship points or inspirations. 21. 21. 16. 19. So Boren, Boren and Bobby are fine. I'm <laughs> waiting to see. Did you roll your inspiration? What did you do? I got five. Well, it's, it's, it's with advantage. So you. you, you, you... <laughs> uh, eighteen. Yay! There you go. Back, back. Um, do I use uh, a fellowship point? It's a fellowship point. Do it. I <laughs> want. One, yeah. I want Tom to come back and be like, "What the fuck happened to yeah. our fellowship points?" So. Spend them. Spend them. That's worse. So no. No? Failure? So we're down to three, though. Uh, so you're down to three fellowship points. And it sounds like, unfortunately, kind of almost, maybe it's the stress of leading this company, the pressure. <laughs> you're stressing me out! <laughs> Uh, it is. God damn, Bungo! It is Get poisoned! Don't you say anything about our sweet Bungo! I don't know why I've gone into. <laughs> take your Bungo's accent. Yeah, I said tomorrow I'm not rubbing off on me! You'd feel well in Orbiton. <laughs> Thank so, you! Yeah, for Iraniel, I think that this almost represents this. as you see the trail that you've been following of these survivors, it leads into the shadow of a cave Ooh. in the side of one of these large hills. Uh, there is a stone door built into the side of the hill and the, tra the tracks lead inside. But as the company trudges on, Iraniel, your doubts, your tiredness of like carrying this great burden that you've been entrusted with leading this company is beginning to weigh heavily on you. Bungo's near, you know, poisoning, the bat, the ambush that you weren't prepared for. And that is going to be a level of exhaustion that ah. you gain. So it means uh, level one is disadvantage on ability checks, so just skill checks, basically. Just the most used thing in the <laughs> I mean, I can do new exhaust. I can do new exhaustion if you prefer, which is a minus one to um, skill rolls and attacks. Would you prefer you, that? You choose whatever you want to do. For I me. I think new exhaustion is better because it's less of a snowball. Mm. Like when you have disadvantage on ability checks, it's much easier to yeah. get more levels of exhaustion. Yeah. Do you, so do minus, you minus one to attacks and ability checks. I'm True. forever traumatized by the Nova thing and the map when I that all sucks. the way. That, that snowball, is the snowball is the correct. Snowball is the correct term. Yeah. Um, but. 
you guys arrive. Uh, you know, most Great. of you still better. Uh, you guys could take a short rest at any point during that, so you could, um, you would be able to spend hit dice to heal yourself. Um, uh, and don't forget that uh, old Bungo has a special magic song that they can sing when everybody anybody tries to heal themselves. Yeah, I'm um, okay for healing. Uh, anybody yeah. spending hit dice to try and heal? I think, yeah. It would be my final one, though. It would be your final one. You got a right bapping, though. True, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Sing me a song. Bungo. I shall sing a song by the campfire. Sing me a song of your people. I'll take out my <laughs> I'll take a pipe, but I can't sing without <laughs> playing a pipe. <laughs> That's my piece. You just play a jaunty tune. Play a jaunty tune. Little, a little jaunty cheerful tune. tune. Yeah, yes, a D. Um, so uh, <laughs> D. you get an extra get D6 uh, to how many Ooh. hit points you get back. Okay. And Bungo, are you spending any hit dice to heal? I shall, yeah. I can do this up to, for up to four You can do, You can close yourself as well. Yeah. So you, your song of rest can apply to yourself yes. as well. I shall do that. Nice. Let's make sure everyone's healed up. So two. I am not going to heal. Yay. I did not get hit. I'm up to full again. Okay, Yay. Nice, perfect. That's what we want to see. It's a bang in tune. Six. Bang in tune. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Nine. Perfect. Good chunk of HP. So that was 28. So while you're working that out, um, the. Yeah, as I said, you see this cave entrance, like framed by an ancient, old, old-looking stone doorway. Not really a doorway, more like an arch, um, set into the side of the hill. Um, the trail, the footprints, uh, and a few droplets of blood leading into it. Um, you see the cave entrance before you? What do you guys do? Uh, door. Those of you who approach, would see that above the door, uh, inscribed into the stone arch, there is an inscription, but it's written in very ancient uh, speech. Not elven, but like just old human speech. So it would be probably not a language any of you speak, but you can make an old law check. Oh, that mean I do that. Sure, you have advantage actually, because you get your extra bonus. You have your um, law keeper. It says plus two bonus. Yeah, so you get plus two. Sorry, so you get an extra plus two. Okay. To old law. Okay. Uh, And then Bobby and uh, Irena, you guys can make a check as well if you like, or Bungo. Old law check. check. Other people need to check. Yeah. I I don't know. Eight. I got an eight. Eight. Thirteen. Thirteen. Got twenty. Twenty. Bungo. Yeah. Wow. I'm just gonna go home. Um, (laughs) Bungo smart. Yeah, Bongo is, but you've, you've studied, you, like, you've read books, and like probably, there's probably like an old healer's notebook that was like from years, like oh. this would have been thousands of years ago, probably during the first or second age, um, written, and you have a copy of it, or maybe there was notes from it, and your teacher who taught you healing craft kind of taught you how to read this language. Oh. This is the inscription above the book. Oh. Do not come in this door, it is evil and cursed. <laughs> this door is you not for a reason. <laughs> you joke about that. I know! But I know, it's pretty what you do it. see is as Bungo's reading the inscription, the darkness of oh. the tunnel within is darker than it should be. And there is a, a, a cold presence in the shadows. Do you know they don't do that in like stories enough where it's like, it is a door, it's forbidding, it's got loads of like, you know, runes and stuff on it. And it is literally like, no, seriously, like this is shut for a reason. The way it's Go shut. somewhere else. <laughs> There's an element of that. There's an element of like, almost like a cold wind blows at me. Is my sword glowing? Your sword is not glowing now. No, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna just every now and then go. Just, just yeah. check. You, just keep you, you will have to tell me when you're gonna check because it is in a scabbard, so you will need to pull it free. If you <laughs> just like. hold it at all times. Yeah. I mean, if you do that, yeah, let me know. Um, all right, Bungo, do you wanna? Are you gonna tell? I me? can read it if you'd like me to. I think I, I think I understand it. Yes, please. Um, here lies Her Majesty Queen Raedra of the Sunworn Hills. Don't want my voice to May her voice still be heard from the sky to which she returned and bless us as it always has. With her shall rest her sworn hands and our golden raiment gift of the Elder Ones. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I will tell you now with that, even with that old Law 20, that name, Queen Raedra, is from so long ago it has almost no meaning. Mm. Um, you can, there's a few things that you can infer from it. Clearly, she was a person of power, mm. um, and she was interred here. As the Baradowns is, that's what the Baradowns is here for. It's where the ancient kings of the first age, kings and queens of the first age, were buried. Um, 
What about the um the sun worn hills? Like, does that does that ring a bell? It would probably refer to what this land was known as mm. by the early men and women who lived here. But this was like the first age. They they probably mm. wouldn't have been called the South Downs or anything like that. Yeah. Like it probably had a different name. But it might have been like a regional name. It might have just been what that this tribe of people called it. That's really cool. Um. Didn't <clears throat> didn't your song that sweet little elf chap sing mm. you say something about dawn and um, something? Boren's memory coming in handy there. <laughs> It says, by the light, by the golden light of dawn shall be your greatest ally. Oh, dead queen? Sounds like a good ally. In darkness you will find death. The sun shall sing to Ominous the Ominous looming darkness of the tunnel <laughs> When behind. the wolf howls. It's pretty deathy back there. I mean... Yes, but it's the barrow dance. Do we wait till... The sun whole place is death. <laughs> do we wait till sunrise before we go in? As the... the the, the elf told me the golden light of dawn shall be your greatest ally. So do we just, do we wait till the sun Midday, I'm going to say, by the way. You arrived here about midday. The sun is already up. <laughs> Still looks way dark. Way up. <laughs> way up there in the sky. <laughs> no, If you did want to wait till dawn, you could do it, but it would be mean waiting here a whole day. Yeah. Mm. Unless dawn is metaphorical. Maybe that was the name of the queen. Metaphorical. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, might have been a mistranslation on my part. So, uh, uh, the blood goes that way. Does the blood the go into the door? It does yes. indeed. Yeah. Two sets of footprints. Um, having tracked them for so long, I'd say that by now you can figure out that there is a man and a woman. Um, the man is limping and is heavier set. Um, definitely red blood. Yeah, Not human blood. Yeah. And there was definitely a sign of them, like, for a brief period of time, like, the tracks clearly showed that they were being pursued. Um, but it looks like maybe, like, you know, they lost the trail or something like that after they took refuge here. They might need our help. I mean, I guess it doesn't mean we find our death in there, just that there is death in there. There is at least one death in there. Dead queen. We should be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's full of dead, it's got no more room. <laughs> Statistics are in our favour. <laughs> I say we go in. The hope of halflings. <laughs> Making jokes. Just when you need them. What's the plan? My Same brain's plan. broken. <laughs> yes, we did it. I say we go in. Then people, they're injured, they need our help. Let's go help them. What the Hobbit said. All right. Yeah, but louder. <laughs> So, <laughs> more is the plan <laughs> to enter. If so, anybody who is entering, I need you to make an intelligence saving throw against shadow. So, Hobbit, Ooh. you have advantage. Cool. Intelligence saving. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eight. Huh. Eight. What? Eight. Sixteen. Twenty-one. Oh. All right. So I need to do some maths here. Give me a second. So eight. Fifteen. Fifteen. 16. 16. Plus 21. Nothing. I'm a golden god. It's important to know. I'm a golden god. <laughs> so, as you enter this, because there is malign sorcery at work, uh, Bobby, you failed this saving throw by more than five. Oh, no. no! You gain three shadow points. Oh, my god. That's a lot of shadow points. That's a lot. Uh, Borin and Iraniel, you gain one shadow point each. What? You succeeded and reduced it by one. Our dear sweet points? Bungo, succeeding by five or more, takes no shadow points. <laughs> yes. How many sweet shadow points child. can one get? Before? How many? Well, let's, let's do a count in. Let's see where everyone's at. What, how, what are you up to? Wait, hold on. Four? You're all right. That okay. was my first three. That was your first three. I'm on two. Two. I killed someone and he gave me one. Three. Yeah. God. Three. All right. Um, yeah, you're fine. You need to tell me when your shadow points equal half your wisdom score. So if your wisdom was 14, you would have to tell me when your shadow points are seven. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. oh mine has to be five. Uh-oh. All right. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you reach that point, you become miserable. Oh. <laughs> Too, late. Too late. Give it to me now. Um, miserable is a condition that is like ongoing. Um, you can clear all of your shadow at any point um, by taking something called a shadow scar, but we'll come, we'll go into that Ooh. when it's scars. Shadow scar. It's a scar on your soul. Oh. I'm down for that. 
Oh, the stars are cool. It's you can't see it. Oh, that's the point. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I can tell you, in fact, actually, Miserable uh, decreases the fellowship rating, so you lose a fellowship die. Oh my die. god. Um, <laughs> He's just that grumbly dude at the back, like, what's the point? <laughs> it's gonna suck. Uh, also, <laughs> basically, uh, ones and twos become automatic failures. Oh my miserable. god. So, you guys push on into the darkness. Um, apart from Borin, by the, it is pitch black. Borin, you can see. I'm going to say that you can see in the dark. What about light sources for the rest of you? Are we going to light some torches or lanterns? I have a hooded lantern. Sure. And some oil. Mm-hmm. Three oil. Well, you tell me what you're doing. Like the rest of you, you see that the tunnel, like the daylight from outside stretches in enough where you begin to see like rough hewn stone stairs heading down. But as they go down, that light is not following and it is pitch black. Oh, I do have a torch. Why are we going down here again? Finding people. Okay. Blood people. Um, Glee so I have, a, I have a tinderbox. I don't have. Oh, thank you, Samuel. Uh, uh-huh. Ooh. Uh, did I not write torches down? You, you should You should have... Um, oh, no, that's right, because I think you're a ranger. They have limited... So depending on what class you are, you get limited equipment. Oh, yeah. I, I have, have nothing useful. For I have ten torches and a tinderbox. Mm-hmm. I have a tinderbox, but no torches. I have a it might as well. A torch has to be held in one hand. So three like, oil. If you have a shield. I have I... some... Can I light a torch and then say, stay close to me, my lady? <laughs> you absolutely can. Why did you invite Brian in? <laughs> I love it. Okay. This is great. Oh, um, horn dog Brian. So for Actually, Bobby, yeah, it's not unexpected. For Bobby, are you putting away your axe or your shield as you wield a torch? It is one-handed. You have to hold it in a hand. I will put away my axe. You can use a torch as like a club as well, like if you want to use it as an improvised weapon. Mm. Um, all right, so Bobby lights a torch, which is enough <laughs> for everybody who cannot normally see, saddling close to Iraniel. Um, it is not, uh, so for those, so for Bungo, uh, Bobby, and Iraniel, you can now see in about a 20 foot radius around you, um, <laughs> bright light. Maybe about 30 feet with dim light. Um, Baron, you can see pretty well in dark, as long as you, but you would have to move ahead of the light. Yeah, otherwise, it's yeah. going to ruin your night vision. Ruining my night vision, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's like your dark vision. <laughs> so, like, are you going to move forward ahead of everyone? <laughs> Thank you for the sound effect, <laughs> <laughs> I have a question that's slightly off topic. Sure. You've written something called Old Toby on my thing. Yeah. I think it's tobacco. Yeah, it's tobacco. Yeah, it's weed. Pipe it's weed. weed. Oh. Pipe weed. I have ten of those. Um, Old Toby, finest weed in the South Island. It is. I've heard it. it was just the I've little guy. <laughs> Shout, like, shouting that triggered my exercise goal. I, I, uh, <laughs> it really did. You've, you've, you've done enough <laughs> cardio there, yeah. exhalation. You can make chips. I thought it was a Toby jug. Only if you're a wizard. <laughs> True. Right. Yeah, right. Anyway. It's a Toby jug. Um, I will go slightly forward and probably die. So right. think so of me. So Boren is going to move ahead. Um, in that case, can I have Boren make a perception check? Here we go. Uh, and I've got zero perception. <laughs> Is that a one? Sam, I need you to light the eye! <laughs> Great eye. I roll a natural one. How many can we possibly roll in two sessions? <laughs> Holy crap, this is, worse, we, this is worse than usual, isn't it? It's pretty bad. There we go. Of all the places Sam want to be, this would be quite uh, perfect. <laughs> I don't know, I'm underground. Can you see underground? Right. As you descend, the rough, hewn stone stairs, Borin leading the way, it emerges into a large natural cavern. The sound of rushing water can be heard here, and a damp smell permeates the area. You can just about see, uh, with your flickering light and Borin's vision. Sauron. Um, <laughs> it's just Sauron sitting. <laughs> so- let me finish. Wait for you. you make jokes, let me finish this. It's my turn to play on the Xbox. You see that an open chasm with a fast flowing river moves through it. An ancient stone bridge once crossed the chasm to a platform on the other side, but now with now open with a stone door. However, the bridge has collapsed with age and is practically useless. Ooh. Ancient wooden icons and statues have been positioned around the chamber, though in the gloom it is hard to make out their detail. You also just barely, even with a one, you bust just barely hear a kind of <gasps> from the shadows. Oh my god! I hate that! I hate that! I hate what that. do you do? Well, you're the leader. I'm just a dwarf. You're you're technically leader right now. Oh, 
Um, this is your your area. I roll a natural one, though. I roll a natural yeah. I mean, like, looking around, like, that is literally everything you see is what I just described. Yeah. I, just, I just told you what I saw uh, with my eyes. My dwarf eyes. Human eyes so weak in the dark. <laughs> Well, Boren uh, is. Uh, I can see you glaring himself. at me in the dark. <laughs> Good. <laughs> What's Bobby and Bungo going to do? Um, if I peek down at Iraniel's sword, can I see any glowing coming out? Or would I not uh, be able to if it's. Is it totally can I would, I'm also going to say you wouldn't know to. Well, I guess you were there no, when Cal Hill there, talked about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you look down and there's no glow coming from the scabbard. Okay. Unless Iraniel is choosing to draw the sword. Like, I don't know. <laughs> no, it seems to be normal. Mm. Uh, Bungo, anything you would like to do in this area? You can see that, yeah, there's basically like, imagine like a, a kind of um, stone, or kind of like a cavern, like half of a cavern. Um, there's this stone bridge that would have once crossed over to another uh, other side of a, of a chasm, a chasm, um, a with a stone door that's open, and you can see that there's probably another chamber, though, in the dark, you can't, you actually you wouldn't be able to see any detail. Um, but it does seem to lead somewhere. Uh, the chasm is about 20 feet across, though. It is a significant distance. Too far to toss a dwarf. We could try it, I'm up for it. Uh, <laughs> certainly try it. Just don't tell the elf that is, what's his name, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Can I, like, take one of my Evolve sling them. stones mm -hmm. and drop it down Evolve the chasm to see how Evolve deep it is? Yeah, you hear, like, a kind of as it hits the side of the rock. Um, it's probably about 40 to 50 feet down, but there's this fast-flowing underground river. Mm -hmm. And the current, the, the stone is, like, whipped away. Like, even, like, you hear it, and in fact, you wouldn't be able to see the stone because it's dark, but you hear the splosh, and you can hear the churning current of the river. Um, anything that fell down there would have a very difficult time. That's bad. <laughs> down is bad. Congratulations. Spon <laughs> Captain. Uh, don't, Obvious. Obvious. Don't, don't go. Um, you just hear, like, muttering. Does anyone hear the ominous muttering coming that way? They can't tell where it's coming from. It's kind well, of bouncing around the chamber. Well, they can't see me point. That's true. <laughs> they can. They've got a light. <laughs> but just so you know, like, it's kind of the, the shadows of the corners around the room and stuff like that, like, you know, you, you, it's bouncing around. What's, um, what's Hobbit sense? Uh, Hobbit sense is the thing that gives you advantage against the shadow. So it's basically like okay. your your steeled heart against um, the shadow. I cool. thought it was going to be sensing when food was nearby. Yeah, <laughs> <It could be laughs> which is just me. <laughs> Normally, I'm like, hmm, there's food. I think I would just give them that ability, regardless of what the game says. Um. <laughs> I will walk a little bit further in. Mm -hmm. You come across uh, the edge of the chasm with the stone bridge, like the broken bridge. Do you need assistance? Uh, when you speak out loud, you hear a kind of... Uh, <gasps> make a perception check for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it Red yeah. Eye of Sauron time? No, it's right. not, it's not. But it's still bad. Um, 12, but I've, oh, rolled, okay. I've rolled a 9 yeah. so many times today <laughs> that it's, fucked, it's just annoying me. Do you want one of my dice? No, I've got plenty okay. of dice. Daddy dice? <laughs> Even with it, 12 still enough. Because, um, like, Borin was just not paying attention. Coming in here, it's not hard to see. <laughs> uh, no, it's just shit. It's accurate. No, I... <laughs> torch kind of illuminating thing. You see that slumped against the wall, tucked between two of these wooden statues, um, you see a, a, a human man slumped up against the, the wall, kind of like uh, in a resting position. Um, uh, Bobby would have to probably get closer to the torch to see the details, but he looks to be wearing sort of like a cloak, armor. Um, is it any of it recognizable as from a certain area, like from uh, from you, if you take Bobby closer with the light, you'll be able to see a lot more. Is it on our side or? It's on your side, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's like literally yeah. just behind you. Like you've moved into the room, and like you would hear it, but it was bouncing around okay. the echo. And then sort of Iraniel turns and like tucked into the corner behind these like wooden statues. Um, I'll yeah. move, yeah, move sure. further. Um, with the torchlight, you can see, well, first of all, the statues you see are like wooden icons. Um, they depict a woman in armor with a sun like crest behind her head. And you can also see various human warriors with weapons and shields scattered around. But the, the man, um, you immediately can tell Iraniel he wears the green cloak of a ranger. Probably not uh, an actual full Dunedain, a human who's like been inducted into and like trained in the ways of a ranger. Um, he's uh, probably in his like 30s. He's got a dark beard, short dark hair, um, 
and he is dressed in sort of leather, studded leather armor. Um, he doesn't have a weapon or anything anymore, but you see an, a goblin arrow sticking out of his gut, like out of his side. Um, and he looks deathly, like pale, very much like Bungo did. Um, and he's sweating and he's almost feverishly just like, no, no, don't, don't, don't listen longer. And he's just like muttering to himself, like he's in a fever. Okay. Miss that. And he looks, and, and I would say that uh, Bobby, like, and uh, Raniel, like, he looks, he probably is one of the survivors from yeah. the Ford. Can I um, crouch down to him mm -hmm. and speak to him? Um, were there any other survivors? Where are they? And, like, his eyes kind of, like, flicker and flutter, but he's almost, um, doesn't seem to... If he does hear you, it's almost like he can't respond or, or something. But um, yeah, he looks—he doesn't look good. He looks bad. Um, it would probably take a medicine check to try and, you know, is, is examine how how bad. Can he I is. ask Bungo if she can come sure. and have a look, being good with medicine? Don't have to ask me. Yeah, come. Can you so Bungo see if you can do anything? Yeah. It's it's the same the same thing that happened to you. The arrow is poisoned. Oh, sure. you poor thing. They're horrible, aren't they? You don't look. you don't need to make a medicine check because you're trained in this. The others, you probably would have had to make a medicine check if you wanted to examine him, but Bungo does not need to. Um, you kind of look over him, Bungo, you like check his temperature, uh, you like it, like pull open one of his eyes to see like what his pupils are, they dilate heavily um, in the torchlight, um, and you kind of examine the wound area and it smells. As soon as you get close to the wound, like, That's infection. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's nasty. Um, can I try and use my, um, my leech craft? If you'd um, like to spend the use of it. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I'd like to. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's the one use of it gone. Like you won't be able to use that again today. Um, yeah. As you expend it, you begin to pull out, and it takes a little bit of time. This this probably takes like a you know an hour, um, but you begin to kind of apply the leeches. You pull out like materials from your herbalism kit. You mark off three uses of your herbalism as well for me. Um, but as you begin to treat him, and Bungo begins kind of like attending to the man. And after about an hour, you can see that she's pulled out the arrow, she's bound the wound. Um, Bungo's kind of put like a coal, like get some water, um, probably from a water skin, coal compress on his head. I got um, some stew if you want. <laughs> probably offers day, him or? at least some rations. <laughs> and just to like get a little bit of food in his mouth, helps him chew it. Basically attends to him in like medical care. And his eyes do kind of almost flutter open as if coming out of a fever. Um, and he kind of is just like, where am I? Who are you? And he's like desperate rasping, and you can see that he's like painfully wounded, but he's like, oh, where's Deanna? What happened? Who are you? We, we're travelers. We're, we, we're passing by. We, we got attacked. We got ambushed by probably the same forces that you did. The orcs! The orcs! The goblins. Yes, the goblins, the wargs. <sighs> are there any other survivors? Yes. Where are they? He like weakly points. It's like she could walk on air. Something. I heard music, singing, and something carried her over the bridge. Deanna, a girl from a village, she, she would bring us food and supplies. And she, he points over the bridge into like you can see the stone door open. Uh, that way. And they. I told, they... tried to, tried to tell her not to listen. Would I have heard of anyone called Deanna or if any anything to do with... I don't know, I'm trying to figure out if I know anything based on the figures and everything that are around and if something took her across the bridge. You can make a... We don't have Arcana in this, do we? No. Mm -hmm. uh, old law, old, old law then. Mm -hmm. Anybody can make an old law. I do it. I do it. 16. Uh, you get your plus two bonus to this, uh, Lauren, because this is a story and, and things like that. I don't do it. You don't do it. 16, uh, four, though. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, no. Um, Iraniel, you remember what Ilvaris, uh, Il Ilvasar said about the Barrow Downs, and you recall your own knowledge of this place, and you remember that many of the Barrows of the great kings and queens here were <sighs> assaulted, almost, by the, de the demons and the spirits of Angmar. Mm and they often would possess the remains or the armors or just the spirits corrupting them in these barrows. And if this Deanna, if, if, if Hargrim didn't imagine it 
Like, yeah. I mean, it, it, he's in a fever. He could have imagined this woman flying across the bridge. But you know enough of the world. And whilst it sounds outlandish, you know that there are powers here. And it is entirely possible that maybe one of these wraiths or whites has lured her deeper into the barrow for some reason. Um, Can I um, yes. like pick up a handful of like earth yeah. and throw it across like where the bridge would be if it was You there? want to see if this is Indiana Jones? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it is not. Oh. Uh, it's, it is broken and gone. Um, but I would say, so you scoop up the hand thing. You do see that Hargrim has equipment on him. He has a backpack. He has like a 50 foot section of rope. Um, he has like a water skin. Um, he has a few arrows still in his quiver. And he has a hand axe. Um, and he's kind of, but he's like clutching the axe like tightly in one hand. Um, and he seems to kind of come around a bit more. He's still like incredibly weak, um, but sort of like Bunga, you can pull more water in his mouth. And he's like, uh, yes, the, we fled the ambush at, at the ford. Uh, creature uh, wags with goblins and orcs. They came and ambushed our camp. We've been trying to track them, hunt them. They're in the hills, the hills of the South Down, the Howling Hills. But Diana, and he like tries to stand. Oh, he can't, he's too weak. Um, that thing's taken her. The thing here, the spirit, the wraith. And he's like, eyes go wide. Do I get a feeling that this might be the shadow that maybe Gandalf was talking about? A powerful Barrow White or Wraith that manages to maybe gain a yeah. human body could very much be a powerful agent of the enemy. Yeah. Would be a, a powerful ally of Sauron. Are there wooden statues on the other side? Uh, no. Oh. There are not. There's quite a few of them over here, though. There's maybe uh, like six of them. Um, and they're big. They're fairly big. They're stout, uh, short and stout, but they're they're quite wide, almost like tree logs that have been carved. Um, and normally, like wood shouldn't last this long. I mean, these must be thousands of years old, but they've clearly been treated. They are somewhat rotten and degraded, um, but they've they've lasted surprisingly well. Okay. Hmm. I, is there anything that theoretically? I could tie a rope to an arrow and fire it into on the other side. Yeah, do you want to give me a perception check? See what you can see if you're like peering across? Because don't forget, it's dark in here. You've only got the light of your torch to go by. Eight. Eight total? <laughs> um, yes. You can spend, you would not spend a fellowship point, or do you want to just leave it at that? Can I look with my dwarf eyes and be like... Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can make a perception check as well. my dwarf eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I say you can either give advantage like a re-roll to Bobby, or you can make your own perception check. I will give advantage to Bobby. All right, Ooh. sure. So you can roll again, Bobby. Oh, 18. 18. So it's with Borin's help. Borin, like, you're looking around, and on the other side, it's like a fairly dirt kind of rocky stone platform with this stone door. And, like, looking around, like, an arrow wouldn't find any purchase there. But then you kind of look up, and you see that there are, like, stalactites uh, on, on the ceiling. Um, some of them have got, like, roots almost wrapped around them, like tree roots sticking through the ground. And actually, if you could get, like, a piece of rope tied around, like, a stalactite decently or maybe loop through the roots, that could probably bear enough weight to swing across. Like, absolutely. But it would require a pretty skilled shot to do that. Not me. Uh, what what skill would that be? <laughs> that would be using your bow. It would just be an attack with yeah. your bow. Oh, and can I try it? Yeah, absolutely. So you, it would be an arrow each time you try and do it. Remember to mark off your arrows, by the way, because I think you fired one in the last uh, encounter oh, yes, as well. I did. So Make sure you mark those off. Um, I'm use my you're also down mind. two extra rations as well. Uh, what would you like to do, Bungo? Can I use my cunning mind to help um, to help Bobby make the... the absolutely can. It gives advantage. Nice. Yeah. Help action. Okay. Four so you roll, roll twice and take the highest because you have advantage from Bungo. <gasps> Natural Not 20! Oh, yeah. You pull out an arrow with your great bow, and you can see that this isn't like a naught, like this is a thick recurve bow, like something that only somebody fairly strong would be able to use. And you pull it back, and not only do you fire the arrow, you actually kind of manage to like, not only hit a part of this big thick tree root that's poking through the roof, but it also kind of like sails through and loops down. So it has like a bit of like tension on it. So even if the arrow comes loose, it might wedge um, the, the, the actual arrow and the rope, but you know, yes. yeah. So you manage to wedge it in and you've now kind of basically got like a swinging rope that you can use to cross this gap in, yeah, easily. Um, you see uh, the man, um, you don't know his name yet, um, but he like grasps onto you, Eraniel, and he's just like, Diana, please, 
Don't let that thing take her. Please res save her. We will. We'll try our best. Are there any other survivors? He just shakes his head. Uh, she tried. Serena tried to run with us, but they, they shot her down as we ran. Uh, I think we're the only two. Uh, I need to... Uh, your little hobbit, thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, I need to rest, but afterwards, uh, once this business is dealt with, I could take you to the hills, show you what we were looking into with the, the orcs. They've got warrens out in the hills. Miles of tunnels. They're, they're preparing. I think they mean to attack Bree. Can I kneel down and, like, put my hand on his shoulder and just say, what is your name, friend? Oh, Hogren. I know you. You're a friend of Deanna's and the others. Uh, the Wanderer. Bobby, isn't it? Aye, that's me. Ah, he, like, looks up at you and he says, and he kind of, like, reaches out and, like, grasps your forearm. Hogren. I'll get it back. Thank you. And he just sort of like slumps down, like begins to rest. Um, yeah. Can I swing across? Absolutely can. <laughs> you guys don't need to roll with that excellent shot with the rope. You can easily all just swing across to the other side. Um, easily done. Uh, on the other side, the stone door, uh, once you across the bridge, leads into a kind of rectangular chamber, stone chamber, worked, not dwarven craftsmanship. <laughs> this is crude, crude early human. Pitiful. Um, rough and jagged in most places. But when you enter, uh, you do notice that there are four stone sarcophagi placed mm -hmm. around the tomb. Their visages carved to resemble some of the warriors of the wooden statues you saw in the previous chamber each bearing different weapons, one with a spear, two with hammers, and one with a sword. Um, there are iron sconces mounted into pillars in the corners of the room, um, all empty, all without light. The sarcophagi each have inscriptions, although you would need to get closer to examine them and read them. But also, when Bobby enters the room, the flame on his torch turns wicked green. Ooh. Can I pull out my sword? Please? When you pull out... Oh. Michael, what is it? I can't remember what I called it. Littering thing? My Caril. My Caril. The blade, not brightly, but a soft blue glow. Can I put the torch into one of the sconces and pull out my axe? Put it into the corner sconce, um, yeah, absolutely. There is a door on the far side of the chamber, closed, uh, but seemingly no handles, just like stone set into the wall in the shape of a door. Uh, what would you guys like to do? Um, can I call Bungo over to one of the, like, the writing and just mm -hmm. say, here, does this mean anything to you? We'll have a look. Yeah, I mean, you already made the check, you can read this. Let's see. That wind that you heard and felt outside. As Bungo, you're kind of deciphering this. And the stillness as Bungo reaches down to read. That wind no longer sounds like wind. It begins to sound like singing coming from beyond the door. Oh sun, oh sun, fall and fade. O oh sun, O oh sun, bring forth the shade. Darkness crawls, gloom doth creep into the dead, the shadows see. O oh sun, O oh sun, wretched light. O oh sun, O oh sun, give way. Tonight, I need you all to make an intelligence saving throw. Ooh. Eighteen. Eighteen. Two. Two. Twelve. Twelve. Eleven. Eleven. Everybody but Iraniel, as this haunting song, you feel something dark and terrible. You each get a shadow point. Oh no. Iraniel, you gain none. 
steeled against this, the kind of light of my caril kind of uh, settling you at ease. Comfortable weight in your hand. I get one more shadow point, I'm going miserable. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to be real miserable. So, Bungo, mm. you know, having fully deciphered this uh, message, what do you say? Um, I'll point to one of the tombs. Uh, Leofric, Dagmar, Sigvald, Malhan. Till the sun doesn't rise, till the song isn't sung, let none disturb the queen till the last bell is rung. Um, if you guys, because obviously your characters might be better at things like riddles than you guys are, you guys yes. are free to work this out yourself, but you do have the riddle skill. I do have skill. a riddle which skill. Which you can roll and if I've you like. It basically is a way of being like, Mark, help, me no good at riddle. Plus zero. Sure, but, but you can roll it. Did you roll that natural one? She did. <gasps> Sal Ross, Sal Ross, I am Sal Ross, 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 you're trying to think, but all you can hear is that song, that chorus, uh, talking about darkness seeping into the dead and the night, the day becoming night. Got eleven on a riddle check. Eleven, not enough to really fathom it, like to give you any hints. Obviously, you as Katie can offer you to work. Kim these. knows best with riddles. <laughs> I also have a ring. Oh. You've used one use of it already. I've used one use. Perfect. I'm going to use a second. Let's do it. Right. Let's go. Achieve a magical success on a riddle or investigation show. Oh! In that case, Bungo, what did you roll just so we know? 19. 19. Um, not, you're not going to get to the same amount. <laughs> so I'm going to give Bungo the clue, but you're basically going to immediately know what this means. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to give Bungo a clue. Um, the, the, the riddle, Bungo, for you, you hobbits play riddles all the time. Mm. Like, this is kind of a Love common it. thing. You remember, like, old Bilbo stories about the moon old door. Crazy like Bilbo. The old crazy Bilbo. Weirdo. Um, Weirdo Baggins. Weirdo Baggins. You, you're pretty certain that this isn't just like, uh, there's a reason that this riddle's been, this inscription has been put here for a reason. You think that it's not just a kind of, um, you know, a formal commitment to for the dead, these warriors to protect the queen in death, but also maybe a, a, a hint as to how future generations might be able to visit the queen's burial. You think that if whatever this riddle, this inscription is probably some key to opening that door um, and getting further in. Um, uh, the last bell is rung. I mean, like, could, could mean anything. But that, you, you, you're pretty certain that if you if you can, whatever this riddle is, um, it's not just a kind of commitment to protecting the queen. You do think that this is actually a, a very direct hint as to how to open the door. Okay. Um, probably some sort of mechanism or magic is involved. Then we come to Bodin. Hello. And it is, you feel... On the hand that wears the ring, because it would need to go on your hand, this silver ring, the ring of Tenuviel, you almost feel as if a gentle lady's hand was placed on top of it. And it feels comforting and soft, and there's the smell of hemlock mm. and grass and trees. Bell, bell, bell. You look up, and you see that on the roof, normally this would be a perception check to even notice this, there's a fresco. With your dwarven sight, you look up and it shows the queen in the middle with a sun crest behind her hair and warriors and, and, and civilians and peasants around her. Some of the peasants are carrying music instruments, though. You see three bells, but you're like, oh, it's just a... Fr no, it and then you look and you realise that cleverly designed as a fresco, as a decoration, three real bells held by the peasants in the kind of stone carving are real but they've been designed to look like they're part of it. The angle's kind of shaped in a certain way. They dangle 20 feet up on the ceiling. Three bells till the last bell is rung. If you ring those three bells, you think the door will open. Hmm. Um, so I think uh, Warren would answer this like by singing the last, like the last, like so, because it was similar, right? The, mm -hmm. the lyrics in the song that, that he heard was very similar and would sing that last line, um, till the last bell is rung, and then point up into the dark. Yeah, and when Boren kind of points out, the, the all of you look like, it just looks like a stone mural, like something's carved into the ceiling. 
But then after a bit of time with Byron, like, no, 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 look, like, they're real. Like, you see a very faint, like, distortion where the bells, and there's all different instruments, there's, like, pipes and things like that, but the bells that they're carrying, like, almost like ringing bells, are real. They're real bells, um, mm. hidden, painted grey and, and dis disguised in the fresco. How, like, high up is that? About 20 feet, the ceiling. Um. So not, not something you can reach. Um, mm -hmm. You could pick up a stone and try and make like a, a ranged attack, try and hit one of them with a stone. Or Perhaps a good shot. Shoot the bow. Yeah. yeah. I've got my sling. Yeah. Sling would be a good shout as well. Yeah. Does it have to be in, do you have to ring all of the bells at once? Or has it been like a certain order? Well, I believe your inscription that you translated says, till the last bell is rung. Yeah, you imagine it has to be like a, there's probably not a specific order, but each one probably has bing, to be rung. Bing, bing. Yeah. They probably make different sounds, yeah. They do look different sizes bing, bong, and shapes. Bing, bong, bing. Don't not bring bing, 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 I think I'm too worried that if I fire an arrow, it would just come down and hit one of us. <laughs> so oh I not use arrows in this. I think the slingshot would be a good shout, because that's kind of more of a, yeah, it feels like that's a good weapon for it, you know? All right, well, give me a ranged attack with a sling. You've got to, you've got to try and hit it, that's the thing. Yeah. I have an AC of 15, I'm going to say, because they, <laughs> they are small targets high up in the air. How does an eight do? The stone hits a piece of the fresco, chips the stone, lands on the other side. Would it help really if we could that. give the Hobbit a boost? Can uh, I give, like, if you give bunker, a bunker? Yeah, I mean, you can, you <laughs> a Bobby <laughs> Bunker bunker up. <laughs> I'm like, grab you. Right. <laughs> do like a lion king. <laughs> I am going to say, if you're doing that, you have to put your shield and axe away. Just keep oh, that in mind. But uh, yeah, like Bobby lifts you up. Um, and I'd say that with that, because you would get advantage, so he's lifting you probably like 10 feet in the air. Um, so it's a very short range attack. I'd say I'm going to lower the AC down to 10. Oh, nice. Okay. Watch this drive. Maybe maybe 12. Okay. 18. 18. With a lift from Bobby, and you would have had advantage on the roll because it was the help action as well. Yeah, the first one was better. And it makes this kind of like low, like low dull dong. Uh, and you think, ah, that as that happens, yep. the first bell sounds, the sarcophagi don't even move. Oh. But translucent shapes. Uh. And you see the blade of my career glows brightly as these four, no, two warriors protect the queen. And that is going to be where we end today's episode. <laughs> yeah, I had a vibe. <laughs> As the wraiths awaken. Awesome. Oh, Excellent. This. this is great. Very well done, everybody. Woo! Very good. Very good. How close are we to Sauron, though? Quite. Probably. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about Sauron. I'm going to keep that a little secret for me and for next week when we will be wrapping this adventure up one way or the other. <laughs> There's a reason you don't hear about this in the books. Yeah. <laughs> we're not even a footnote. We didn't make it. <laughs> Listen, whilst the Fellowship were off doing their thing, there were plenty of people in Middle Earth yeah. going about trying to help out and do great things. Gandalf was a busy boy. It's like Rogue One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Rogue One. That's exactly it. Oh, why did you have to make it's that end in comparison? The same <laughs> Lol. I really didn't like uh, that movie. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. It took I me love, a couple of watches, though. I it like me a the fight, like the big astral Battle land Scarif battle stuff, thing. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. that was it for me. I didn't like the lead up to I, it. I think that I, well, not to get too off topic, I like seeing more stuff in Star Wars that isn't about the main Star Wars thing. Mm, like, yeah, I loved, like, yeah. first season of Mandalorian. I loved Rogue One. Like, I'm it took done. me a couple of watches to get to Rogue One, but I did enjoy it. Right, um, well, we're going to wrap things up a little bit here. I do have a couple of little things to read out. A um, couple of uh, things. Uh, first of all, thank you, Briny. Yeah. Briny. <laughs> Yeah, we should definitely have you back. Uh, we will be missing Trot next week, but Tom should be back. Um, so we will have uh, five of us here for next week. We're going to wrap this up, continue this, um, because I uh, know I'm going to move on to that in a minute. Briny, where can people find you on the internet if they would yeah, like to watch yeah. you play oh. games and do other things? Uh, it's uh, twitch.tv forward slash Briny K, K A Y. So. Um, do you want to spell Briny just because there's. Yeah. B R I O N Y K A Y. There you go, Briny yes. K. <laughs> 
Brian she Carey, is there, is there. Cozy <laughs> games, <laughs> yeah. chats with bunnies, all good stuff. Um, you can go and catch Briony there. She's lovely. Go and follow her. Um, and follow you on uh, tweets and socials and all the same kind of stuff. Yeah. All same thing. Um, wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will be back next week, and that will be our last week. Uh, and then there will be a week's break, because on November 5th, mm. Campaign 3, Althea, the Dragon Empire, begins. Can't wait. Don't miss it. Set a reminder. Tell your friends. Honestly, this is going to be the best chance if people have said, oh, I really wanted to watch High Rolls. Oh, I kind of want to give it a go. This is going to be the best time. It's a fresh new campaign, fresh new characters. If you've never seen any High Rolls stuff before, maybe you've joined us from Baldur's Gate 3, you watched the Baldur's Gate thing, mm. you've been checking us out. New campaign is 100% the thing to come and join us for. This has been a ton of fun, but the new campaign is going to be extra special Butter. Um, yeah. so come and check that out uh, November 5th um, and then if you happen to be going to MCM Comic Con uh, on Friday at 2pm I will be doing a meet and greet signing bring whatever you want I'll sign it I'm not charging I'm not selling anything bring so your face bring your face bring your books bring whatever um, and then there's also a one shot at 4.30 on the centre stage on Friday at MCM Comic Con and then uh, on the 18th and 19th of November we will also some of us will be at Wales Comic Con in Telford uh, and you can come <laughs> along and check that out we'll be doing signings and a panel as well well, um, but that is going to be it. I do also have a couple of quick messages to say thank you for some donos. I've got, some as well. oh, I've got uh, so I have got uh, Katie, a uh, big old tipperini. You're welcome. Not <laughs> <laughs> this, this Lord of the Rings campaign was a myself. delightful surprise. Been so looking forward to seeing this after a long stress. Thanks for the fun. I think yeah. we've, we've been pleasantly surprised as well. It's yeah. really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also had a lovely message from Anonymous. Uh, no message, sorry, just a lovely donation. And then our good old friend Crispy as well. Ooh. Thanks for the fun. And as always, Briny was a great guest. I hope to see her more in the future. Yeah, more Briny. And then we had Bryony. a lovely raid from uh, <laughs> Litro the Bronze. Litro the Bronze, yeah. Oh, and then you. we had gift subs from Crispy, as always, uh, subbies <laughs> from Being Wolfy, and some from Ale Wolf. So we got the wolves oh. uh, in town. The wolf, wolf clan rise up. Of the howling hero. <gasps> yeah. um, but yeah, we will be back next week. Thank you, Sam, for running the tech Thank as well. Thank you, Sam. Oh, um, and we will see you next week for the thrilling conclusion uh, of of our Lord of the Rings adventure. Till then, goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.